everybody. Aaron hey. Blades here. We are doing a very impromptu uh, live stream today because we just, uh, it snuck up on us, but we're crossing a million subscribers on YouTube today. Holy moly. One million dollars. Subscribers are subscribers. Mm. So, so we, got, we thought it'd be fun to get in the studio. We got the whole gang here today. We got the entire the entire creature art teacher company is here today. Hello, everybody! Hi. Wave at the camera. I'm hiding, but I'm back here. We got Nick and yeah, Claudia yeah, and me oh, and Steve yeah. and Dustin. The whole gang. The whole gang is here, and so we're hoping that uh, we'll do a little streaming today, and maybe we'll cross that one million mark. We got yeah, about yeah. 500 subscribers to go, so. Spread the word. Smash that subscribe button. Yeah, hit that, hit that share button. Hit those comments. Post a bunch of comments. If you're watching us on the other channels, jump over to YouTube real quick and subscribe there. If you if you don't already follow us there, tell someone to subscri subscribe. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, like I said, we weren't uh, actually planning on subscribing or uh, uh, streaming today, but we saw this happening, so we thought it'd be good. So, just to let you know, we will be back again. Next Friday, because next Friday is our first Friday, right? Yep. Am I right? Yeah, that's right. So we'll be back again next Friday, streaming again. But um, we were sitting here, I was, you know, because it happened all of a sudden, I was sitting here trying to think about what I could draw today or paint or whatever. I thought it'd be kind of fun to go back to what I used to do back in the old days when we first started doing this. I did a lot of creature and alien and all kinds of fun design back then. And I haven't done that. Uh, in quite a while, I've been so swamped with animating Snow Bear, and uh, and I, at first I was going to do another Snow Bear poster, but then I thought, you know what? I think maybe people are a little sick of Snow Bear, so I thought I'd just come over and do some fun creature design, like alien creature or something. Uh, do we have any? Before I get into all that, do you, Nick, do we have anything that we want to go over as far as sales? We've or? got some sales and stuff, but let's just dive in. We'll hit those later. We do have uh, some a lot of great comments. People saying congratulations, all kinds of stuff. We well, got, thank you guys. We got uh, Jelly Belly Fish on YouTube says I've been following you since middle school, and now I'm about to graduate with a BA in illustration. <laughs> wow. Thanks, Mayor, for making me feel old. Well, I mean, we we basically have been at this for about 10 years. So we're coming I up think on that's the 10-year awesome. anniversary of Creature Art Teacher. It's a little over 10 years since you started your YouTube channel. Yeah. So how many? Uh, you gave me some stats just a little bit ago. Yeah, we have had over 300 live streams. We've done over 700 videos in that time. Wow. And uh, growing and that's not counting the the snow bear live streams that we do twice a week but the just just on youtube and we've just about we're just about to cross 40 million views on our channel right on well 40 million wow it's uh no mr beast but it's pretty darn cool for us i'll tell you that <laughs> who's mr beast yeah <laughs> so anyway so i sat down a little earlier and i just started scribbling one of the things i like to do when i sit down to start coming up with some kind of creature um, in this case, I was just throwing, I, I wasn't even thinking about environment. I was just wanting to come to bring kind of cool shapes and textures together uh, to create something. And so I literally start like scribbles like this. And they are just me finding, exploring shapes, exploring textures. Um, a lot of times it's, you know, when you were a kid and you, you know, I don't know if you guys played this game, I did all the time with my brother. My brother's an artist as well. We would just scribble on paper, then the other one would have to make stuff out of it. And that's a little bit, it's a little bit more controlled than that, but that's a little bit of what I'm doing here. I just start to kind of scribble and find things that are kind of pleasing in there. And, um, and then I start creating something out of that and I start refining it. And, uh, and I started to hit on something here and I, I liked this idea, this idea of these kind of crab eye stock ideas thing, thing there and hard shells. I wanted like a, like an insect or crustacean kind of carapace kind of shell on the head and, and gills and started thinking about maybe something underwater. But maybe it was a land, you know, it's a, you know, we have land crabs as well. So I thought maybe this could be something on land as well. So that kind of evolved um, into this. And uh, I started refining it more and more. Uh, there was something here that I thought was kind of cool. Um, and what else do I have up in here? Here's one where he's not turning his head. Um, but that being said, uh, I ended up with this. I, you know, he's riding something, some other creature, but I thought it'd be kind of cool to do some kind of portrait of this character in a three-quarter view. 
And so this is the, the rough scribble that, that came out of what I wanted to do. So I thought it would be fun to kind of refine this and, uh, and draw some more. So that's what I'm going to do. I think that's what I'm going to do. Erica says hello. Well, hello, Erica. Erica who? Yeah, that's the other thing. We know so many of you have been watching us since the very beginning. So thank you for being along on this journey. And we know a lot of people have come on board in the last couple of months. So as Bartles and James used to say, thank you for your support. Absolutely. Who remembers, who remembers Bartles and James? Me. <laughs> I'm sure Steve does. <laughs> that was like a sensation. And then it just went away. For a lot of kids, that was the first thing they ever drank. Bartles and James wine cooler. Yes. <laughs> That's what all the girls were drinking back in high school. <clears throat> there we go. So I don't know about the, like having that empty space, open space, areas of concentration and then areas of relaxation. Um, my uh, toy play flu on uh, Facebook says... Wow, that was a mouthful. Yeah, very interesting name. I love it. Uh, <laughs> you are the one who filled my childhood with precious memories. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Well, why do I? All right, so what I want to do here is I want to knock this back. Now that I've got kind of a refined scribble, um, I'm going to knock it back, create a new layer on top. We're going to have a little digital painting lesson today. And, uh, and I might, I might kind of readjust this again, as far as the composition goes, because I've been known to do that. But what I want to do is just kind of get in and start refining the drawing. I'm still going to be somewhat loose and quick with it. Because I like the spontaneity of what comes out of these. And then I just slowly refine it. Find pleasing shapes. By the way, if you're watching us on a uh, on YouTube and you have not subscribed, hit that subscribe button, hit ring the bell, all that stuff. Meow, meow, meow. Hit the like, <laughs> hit the like button, all that stuff, because it uh, it'll help more people see this stream, and then hopefully we'll see that counter cross to a million live. I want to see that happen. Yes, I think I'm more excited now than when my car crossed over to a hundred thousand miles. Right, I know. This is almost as oh, exciting when my car crossed a million miles. <laughs> that never happened. Back in my big rig semi days. <laughs> what did you say, Dustin? We just got a couple of new subscribers just now. Yeah. All right, on. The, the count's going up. Yeah, in the, in the upper part of the screen, the counter you're seeing is live. So there might be a slight delay on what you're seeing, but it's that's a, that's a live counter. So uh, as Aaron mentioned, we do have some sales going on. We're getting ready to roll into Valentine's Day. And so we started running our annual Valentine's Day sale over at Creature Art Teacher. And for people who don't know, on Aaron's website, we have over 700 hours of courses and lessons and uh, brush sets, photo packs, and all kinds of stuff. So if you go to CreatureArtTeacher.com and use promo code ARTLOVE, you can get 35% off any order of $5 or more. And that's also good for our memberships, which gets you everything on the website. So that's promo code ARTLOVE, all one word. We can start getting some more comments here. Hold on. Yeah, see, I like... I get in there and finding little areas of texture that you can have fun with. I'm thinking about crustaceans, lobsters, crabs as I design this. But when I design stuff like this too, once again, I think about just from an aesthetic standpoint, I like to have areas of concentration and areas of, you know, smooth and, and kind of open where your eye can rest sort of, like, you know, like the kind of the big smooth dome. The other thing I was thinking about as I was drawing this, you know, certain things will pop into my head, like a, 
uh, as I'm drawing this, a horseshoe crab kind of popped in my head. I used to catch horseshoe crab. Well, there's not much to catching a horseshoe crab. You just reach out and pick them up. But I used to catch them all the time when I was a kid. I was always fascinated by them. And so it's kind of thinking about horseshoe crabs here too. YouTube Maybe question. This. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. That's I all right. Um, I thought you were going to say something. Is illustration as an artist, is that the type of job that you can do remotely? Yes, Absolutely. I mean, we did that remotely back in the 80s. I mean, illustration work was, um, you know, there was kind of two two ways of doing it. You could be a non-staff illustrator for a magazine or book publishing or whatever, or you were a freelance illustrator. And that's what I went to school for was illustration and uh, specifically doing freelance illustration. And uh, that was a big thing back then. Well, it still is. Yes. Working remotely as an illustrator is very much a thing. And it's even more so nowadays, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. There's probably never been a better time to be a remote artist than <clears throat> ever. Yeah. There's cool tools out there now, like, you know, um, uh, what is it? Ma uh, Magma, is that the one? Uh, you know, where you can draw live with someone across yeah. the world in real time. Magma Studio. Yeah. Uh, which is Bobby Chu's Bobby software. Chu's, yeah, Bobby Chu's software, uh, exactly. That's great. And, um, you know, that's, you can share files instantly, get feedback. There's so many, so many great ways to be become a remote artist. I like creating segmented, There's something about insects that really fascinate me and how they're segmented and that sort of thing. So I like, I like kind of putting that into my designs. I definitely like that, uh, those crab looking eyes. Well, thanks. Thanks, Dustin. <laughs> Less than 500 to go, Aaron. Wow. Samuel says, I'm almost done with your anatomy course. It's really helping my art. Oh, that's great. That makes me happy. Because, uh, whoops, big, big eraser. Remember, you can get that course for 35% off if you use promo code ARTLOVE at CreatureArtTeacher.com. Pack, Packed Animated says, I was taking Spanish classes, but I saw you are streaming for the million and I wanted to be here. So they stepped away from their classes. Well, look at that. Now we can have Claudia kick in and you can have both. Yeah. You have art class and Spanish class. Go ahead, Claudia. Take it away. <laughs> Contributing to the delinquency of people for over 10 years. That's right. See. <laughs> Dave Clayton says, can't wait to see you guys next week. Yes, Dave. For people who don't know, Dave Clayton is an instructor, at, uh, creature art teacher. He just released a course on graphic design for illustrators and artists, which has been super popular. And you can also get that one for 30% off with, or 35% off with promo code ARTLOVE. Mm -hmm. Lots of people saying congratulations. Dragon Shy says congratulations. Absolutely love your work, and I wish you a million more subscribers. Thanks. For Thank you. Inspiration. So here I'm thinking about like jellyfish tentacles. Do you think Clip Studio Paint is good software for animation? Um, you know I've never animated with it. I've I know heard they, good things about it. I know they have animation in it, but I I don't. I don't know, to be honest with you. I think that's going to be one of the streams or, or videos we do in the future is going to be Aaron trying out some 
different animation software just to take yeah i'm a i'm a procreate dreams and tv paint guy um mainly tv paint uh right now because i'm i'm working on our animated short snow bear which if you become a member at creatureartteacher.com you can join me every tuesday and thursday as i make it oh it's rolling now the counter right on steadily um facebook question uh aaron do you have any insights into how monsters inc came about uh i, I just know that it's a pete doctor story and pete doctor came up with it as far as i know you, you got to do some work with pete doctor right or cross paths with him well i mean we crossed paths quite a bit because he's he was pixar and i was disney and we were both basically under the same umbrella didn't your friend jolt build his house yes jolt built his house he lives in a tree house right it's <laughs> yeah a- he lives in a, a like the swiss family robinson but it's made out of an oak he, he actually built an oak tree to blend in with the california oaks kind of like but the, it's uh, giant oh yeah you blend. if you look up pete Do- if you google pete doctor and tree house i'm pretty sure it'll come up because i think they did an article on his house and it's built right into the california kind of built right into a hillside uh dead account on youtube gave us a nice little donation and said just wanted to say thank you your lessons on creature art teacher have helped me improve my art i'm starting my storyboard class today all right Scrap Peep says, amidst all the current AI mess, a lot of people claim it's too hard to learn to draw. I often point out that I learned to draw at age 40 and that your drawing anatomy course in particular was instrumental in that. Thank you for saying so, because, yeah, you're never too uh, old to draw or too young to draw, to learn to draw. And the only thing holding you back is determination. I think AI is going to breed a lot of laziness out there, but hey. What can we do? Uh, Pack Animated has a uh, question about the website. It says, hey guys, I have a question, please. Uh, I asked this because... uh, I I asked this before, but I don't remember the answer, but here it is. Uh, Do you have any plans (laughs) to add a feature add to wishlist on Creature Art Teacher? Yes, we do, actually. Yep, It's in the works. A what? A wish list. Add to wish list. Oh. So they can organize the courses they want to get. Oh, gotcha. And that way, if there's like, um, like a, a new sale going on with the with the course that's on the wish list or anything, they can get notified like, hey, this thing on your wish list is on sale right now. Thanks everyone for helping us spread the word. By the way, we couldn't do this without you, obviously. If you have, let's see, of the 700 videos that we've done, if you have a favorite, let us know in the comments what it is. Are you back to doing more streams on Twitch? This was a Twitch question. Uh, We stream on Twitch every time we stream on the other platforms. So um, it's normally the first Friday of every month. We changed our schedule to the first Friday of every month. Um, but, uh, this is an impromptu stream because, uh, we're about to cross a million subscribers on YouTube. We should do that during this stream. So if you're watching us on Twitch, please go over to YouTube and follow us there too. Once again, I'm kind of picking out my favorite parts of the drawing and refining those. Another another related Twitch question, Aaron. I'm curious to know. I am too. Who in the industry inspires you or has inspired you? Or maybe that question is a bit too challenging. Has there been anyone who's <laughs> directly impacted how you draw? Yeah. I mean, Glenn Keane was a huge impact for me and still inspires me. Mark Henn was a huge inspiration. Hey, potential spam. Um, 
There's we, a lot of people. We heard you just reached a million subscribers. Would you be interested in a new car, extended car warranty? But, um, you know, every, every person I worked with inspired me or influenced me in some way or another. That was one of the great things about working for Disney. When I was at, when I was in college, um, this is the way you always think about it as te in tears. You know, when you're in, when you're in middle school and high school and you're the kid that likes to draw, you know, you're usually like, you know, the best, he's the best artist in the class. And you kind of grow up like, like that, you know, in school. And then you, then it comes time to go to college. And we, and a lot of us that were like that, we went to art school. And then all of a sudden, all of you guys that are in class were like the best artists in the school, right? So now, or you're, or in your class. So now you're surrounded by like-minded people and that's really cool. And you start learning more. Well, then what happened was, you know, I got, when I was picked to go to Disney, when I submitted a portfolio and was, and, and made it in, then all of a sudden I was with like some of the best people in the country. And I started learning at such an exponential rate um, from people. I mean, I, I was just, I've never learned so much so fast from an artistic standpoint. And so every day was, I was learning something new. I remember thinking, man, you know, the, the amount that I've learned in the last three months outweighed, you know, what I learned in college in two years. And I, I really, and I still feel that way. And so um, I was very lucky at Disney to have been surrounded by such great artists all over the place. Every, you know, everywhere I turned, I had somebody great to learn from. So it was very cool that way. What animals in the wild haven't you seen yet? And what, and what would you, uh, all the rest, huh? all the rest, all the rest. <laughs> <laughs> I've said that there's billions of animals out there. You know, they, you know, I just haven't, but there's a lot of places I'd like to go for sure to see stuff. Uh, did Andreas Deja or Eric Goldblur, Eric Goldberg influence your work at all? Of course. Yeah. I mean, I was able to work with both those guys with Eric. I worked with him as an animator and him as a director working. He directed Pocahontas. And so, um, being able to work with him in that way and then just seeing the way he worked as an animator, uh, was super inspiring. Everybody had their own, has their own approach to animation. And Eric has a very distinct look and approach to his work. And, uh, and it was very, very inspiring and, and fun to learn from him. Jelly Belly Fish on YouTube says, uh, one of my favorite videos has to be the Procreate Valentine's Day drawing you did with the two deer. Either that or the character design video where you showed how to draw a snow bear. Oh, Those are yeah. my favorites. Oh, good. Which, what was the one with the two deer that would procreate? You do two deer in the, in the woods. It was kind of cartoony deer. They're really... It's really pretty drawn. Oh, the pro Yes, yes, yes. I do remember that one. I forgot about that one. That's weird. My, my brain, when they were saying procreate, my brain was thinking proco. That's why. I, that's why I couldn't. I couldn't figure it out. Uh, Jason says, as a yearly subscriber to your site and as a music educator for 21 years, I very much appreciate the way you teach. I started drawing as a hobbyist a year and a half ago, and I've learned so much from you. Well, thank you. I, um, I love teaching, that's for sure. Is it an entire? Is it possible to make an entire short film on TV Paint without using Photoshop or Premiere? It's a question from Mark. On Absolutely, YouTube. yeah, yeah. You could. Well, I, I do think you sh you need to have something to cut everything together on. I do think you need some editing software. Um, it is possible in TV Paint you to do can it. Do editing in yeah. TV Paint, but it's not really designed for that. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's better to have the editing software, but you can do it for sure. Uh, Shannon Hayward's asking, what, what are we drawing? We're drawing some creatures. Jason Clark says, my wife is sitting next to me here, and we're both rooting for you to hit a million. Thank you. Almost there. Well, thank you. 21 
Thank you very much. Uh, Extreme Maybe says, my favorite stream was the Christmas Grogu. That was also the first stream I ever watched of yours. Uh, I like that. That was a fun one. They also basically just said it's been downhill ever since. I mean, if you think about <laughs> it. The first one was their favorite. and uh, Yeah, and then uh, you just never, we peaked right away, right there. Yeah, keep letting us know what your favorites are. And, and if it's a stream or a live video, I know a lot of people love Aaron's Persistence of Vision number nine. That's that, or, or Aaron's Art Tips number nine, where he talks about persistence. That's right. always been one of my favorites. <clears throat> Gotta well, keep going. One of my favorites, uh, just because it was such a great challenge uh, and, and was very rewarding in the end, was the uh, Animal Kingdom video from last year oh yeah that was fun i i enjoyed that one doggone it stop it potential turn spam turn the ringer off i just did you turn the ringer off <laughs> uh a twitch comment you need to send in the request for the gold youtube plaque as soon as you hit one million. Oh, we will we will. We've got the OG 100,000 plaque. They don't make them like this anymore. Baby, you know me. Where is it? Oh, yeah. Go, go to Aaron only. That's what we got when we hit 100,000. Oh. There it is. And you don't get another one till 900,000 more after that. Yep. Okay, really crazy. Crazy. You're so crazy. All right. So now we got something that's a bit more refined. I, I might blow. Let's see here. Have you ever tried Open Tunes, Aaron, for animation? That's Studio Ghibli software, I believe. No. No, I have not. Here's a question, I think, from a newer subscriber. Dear Aaron, I saw your name in the animators team of The Beast in Beauty and the Beast. How was that process like? And what was it like working with other animators? Yeah, it was all right. I loved it. I'm just kidding. I, I loved working on Beauty and the Beast so much. That's where I really grew the most as a, as a professional, as an animator, working under Glenn Keane, who is the supervisor of the Beast. And um, I really grew a lot. And uh, I've got nothing but great things to say about working on that project. It was so much fun. And Kirk Wise and Gary Trousdale, the directors, were awesome to work with. And we're still all friends. Uh, it was great. Yeah, it was fantastic. I think after Glenn, you have the second most Beast footage, right? Is I did, it? yeah. Yeah. So you did the scene where Beast is getting bandaged in front of the fireplace. And yeah. The scene with, uh, there's something there that wasn't there before. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, when he's, when she's leading, he's leading Belle through the castle and all that stuff, right? You know. I did all that, yeah. And, and yeah, there's a, there a whole bunch of stuff I got to do in there and uh yeah and I was just lucky enough to have you know to be able to have enough work and plant my butt in my chair and draw Nova X Jewel says you have like a huge crew a huge crew we're getting the band back together <laughs> I think I might do this, do a, a horizontal instead. Are you planning to convention pretty soon? Megacon in Florida is happening next week. It would be awesome to meet you in person. You know, um, we we were toying with the idea of uh, doing something. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure we're gonna we're gonna go, but we might. I'm tempted to just get some tickets and go scope it. Just walk the floor and yeah, see what it's like. You know. Let us know in the comments if you're going to be at Megacon. Orlando, and whether Aaron should go or not. Uh, YouTube question, have you ever drawn dinosaurs? And if so, 
do you like to how do you like to draw them uh mainstream typically de- how the mainstream typically depicts them or do you try to be more paleo accurate um i don't re- i don't draw them a lot but in the times that i do try to draw them i i uh i don't know enough about the paleo accuracy of them other than having feathers i don't know i don't know enough about them you've done variations on dinosaurs you've done some that are more realistic some that are more cartoony yeah exactly so Uh, Colonel Fleek. Uh, Colonel Fleek. Hey, Colonel Fleek. Colonel Fleek. Uh, did you play a part in the 3D dancing scene in Beauty and the Beast? No, I did not. But when they re-released Beauty and the Beast in 3D and added new animation, you did animation for that, right? I did, yeah. The uh, Where she's teaching him how to read. Yeah, the ballroom scene that everybody... That's James Baxter, James right? Baxter, yep. He animated all of that, both Be- Beast and Bell. Yeah. <clears throat> well, James Baxter is insane. The guy's a god. An animation god. I've seen a, a, a YouTube ads. Hey, Aaron. Don't hey. if I ask, how old are you now? I am 23. <laughs> 23. I'm, I've uh, been out in the sun a lot, so it's I look a little older. Hard living. Yeah. Animation is stressful. Animation is very stressful. No, I'm, I'm going to be uh, 56 in a couple of weeks. When did that happen? I have no idea. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock this way back. Let's throw in some local color. We're going to throw in some local color now that we have a fun drawing. We're just going to do some rendering. Detlef on Facebook says... Detlef! Detlef! I know that guy. I know him. I know him. He's a good drawer. Yeah, he's all right. <laughs> Della said, "Congratulations, guys! What a number of followers! Absolutely deserve my number one go-to platform to learn about art." Well, you should be teaching art, my friend. Any chance you'll do a birthday stream? Someone asks. Birthday? Birth, birth Probably day. not. Your birthday falls on a Saturday, so. So no. the The short answer. Is no. Nope. <laughs> the long answer is I can explain and talk about my childhood. So I'm just going to throw in a, a color right here and then we're going to lock it down. Then we'll add in some other local color. I'm going to keep this really loose. I want to have some fun with this from a texture standpoint. Keep oh. it. Even Orange worse. Cat says, I've purchased several of your videos. They're fantastic. They're excellent. Congratulations. Thank you. We have fun making them. My Tony says, my favorite animated scene ever is the transformation scene from Brother Bear. Ah! I think we're going to steal a page. I think we're going to steal a page from what we do on TikTok and show some of the cats because we just hit we got 400 to go. All right. Um, what do you think, Aaron? Uh, Just don't drop them. I will. I'm going to bring you down. Maybe give a little context so people know what you did. With your sure. Oh, you've got Yao yeah, now. So here is a maquette from Mulan. And this is Yao. This is sculpted by Tony Cipriano who has some sculpture courses on our website. Uh, Tony did a bunch of maquettes for Mulan. Um, And this is one. So the way we do this is uh, I designed and was responsible for the animation of this character throughout Mulan, along with the ghosts and and a few other characters. But um, uh, when uh, in the beginning of the picture, once we have a character designed, uh, then we... It comes time to do a maquette. The maquettes are there 
to um, be drawing aids. For, you know, if you have a character that you have to draw at an odd angle and, uh, and it's hard to draw, you can use your maquette and use it as reference. And so what you, what you really want to do is come up with a pose that's dynamic no matter how you turn it. And that's really what I tried to do here. And so I did, uh, I came up with this pose and did a front side three quarter, rear three quarter, all kinds of different angles so that Tony had enough information to go off of. Then he went away and sculpted it. And so then I used this as, as, a, as a drawing aid. And Disney uses it as a marketing tool as well and all kinds of stuff. But this was, uh, this was the actual original uh, maquette for Yao from Mulan. And Issa says, I just saw your post on Instagram. I follow you there. Your beautiful and admirable work. I was missing out. So you've got a new subscriber here on YouTube. Right on. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. So one of the things is I like to get a nice kind of clean silhouette here. I want to see what, what we can get here. I heard there's a 2D effects course coming soon. Will there be something about flames with a wide base? I could use something about flames with a wide base. I oh Wait, I could use help on how to do a wall of flame for a project I'm working on. So yes, we have a 2D effects course coming from Joey Mildenberg. In fact, Dustin Dustin's is, working on it is, as we speak. Well, he's well, well not right, as we speak. Right now, I'm looking at the comments, but <laughs> but he's been. But editing. I, I I have been working on it, and yes, there is uh, um, going to be some some about fire. It's going to be uh, there's some uh, subjects on fire, on water splashes, on smoke, rocks. He, he touches on a wall of fire, but. But I think he elected to save uh, that specifically for a future class and focus on different types of fire properties in, in this one. But we This is kind of an introduction to effects animation. Yeah. 2D effects animation, I want to add. He even shows how to make, a, uh, how to make the uh, sparkling pixie dust, pixie dust effect, like the old Disney, uh, mm -hmm. Disney Tinkerbell effects did. He's really quite shy. <laughs> uh, have you seen the show Primal? And have you ever met uh, Gandhi? No, I've never met him. I have seen the show. I love the show. Parker Cox. Um, I actually want to. I'd love to do a show like that. No dialogue. All kind of earth and nature and. It's a little bloody for my taste, but I'd love to do something kind of in that vein, though. Have you ever worked with any different studios like Nelvana or DreamWorks, Warner Brothers, etc.? Yes, I've worked with Warner Brothers, Paramount. Uh, Blue Sky. Blue Sky, uh, obviously Disney. And, um, you did some stuff for DreamWorks, actually, too. Yeah, Cartoon Saloon. Yeah, um, yeah so the, the answer is yes. Yes. Be sure to hit the uh, like button and leave some comments. And if you can share this stream, that would help us a lot. Um, we are 90, 89 away from me bringing out another maquette. Do you have a favorite movie directed by Byron Howard? Yes, Zootopia. Zootopia. I love Byron Howard. Byron Howard have a long Byron Howard and I have a long history. We go way back at Disney, and uh, we worked together on Mulan and Brother Bear. And uh, he's just a a really great guy. What's your favorite movie directed by Byron Howard? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it was really cool. We were at CTN back in November, and we did a panel for the 20th anniversary of Brother Bear, and Byron was able to join us remotely, 
And man, he looked great. Yeah. Had cool guitars hanging in the background. Yeah. Byron's just a cool dude. He's a rock star. He is. Hey, Aaron. Uh, can you tell, please, do you like 3D? Sure. I like any animation medium. I'm curious if I'm, I'm more, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm more attached to 2D, hand-drawn, because that's, that's my, that's where my heart is. But no, I, I like, I like a lot of different mediums. Have you, uh, have you ever worked with any music composers or are animators separate from, and artists separate from them? I've worked with several music composers. As a matter of fact, we just had our first big kickoff meeting with our composer for Snow Bear. And, uh, and so they're off pulling together a budget for us and getting ready to write some music for us. And, and so Aaron, for people who don't know, in addition to being an animator, is also a director. He directed Brother Bear. So yes. You worked very closely with Mark Mencina on that, as well as worked Phil Worked with Collins. Phil Collins, Tina Turner. Worked with a lot of great musical artists. Do you prefer 4D or 1D animation? <laughs> what? Because <laughs> you said you like all kinds of different animation. <laughs> oh, yeah. 2D, 3D. <laughs> Uh, can you repeat the name of the animator for the uh, effects force? Joey Mildenberg. So Mildenberger. Mildenberger, sorry. Sorry. Um, what did you say, Dustin? The last part. And does he have a uh, Instagram account? I don't know if he has an Instagram. I'll have to look that up. I think he does. I know he's got a Facebook account. But he is. I mean, if you look up Joey Mildenberger on IMDb, and I'll post. He's got a huge resume. His, I mean, he's worked on everything from going back to an American tale all the way up through Nimona that just came out. So he's worked for Bluth. He's worked for Disney. He's worked for Warner. He worked on uh, with Richard Williams and uh, 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 what's the movie? Why am I drawing a blank? All of a sudden, that's right on the Thief and the Cobbler. Thief and the Cobbler, yes. He's been everywhere. He's been everywhere, man. Aaron, what are your thoughts on the importance of quick sketching? It feels like it would be very useful for animation in particular. It's extremely useful for animation. It's extremely useful for anybody wanting to do representational art because it, quick sketching really forces you to lay down the essence of whatever it is that you're trying to draw or paint. And, um, and quick sketching helps you find the fluidity, the pose, the gesture, the attitude. And, and as a result of getting those, you get the emotion in your, into your work. And so quick sketching is really great that way. Because a lot of times when you sit down and you're really, you know, kind of chiseling out your drawings, you lose that spontaneity and you lose the, 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 the fluidity and the gracefulness of a, of a good pose. And so... Being able to sketch quickly allows you to kind of hold on to that. Or I could just be wrong. Hmm. We're 74 away from another maquette. No way. From another maquette. Oh, right. All right, let's go. Let's start laying in some color. I want to start laying in some... Uh, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. Let's start laying in some complementary colors and just see what happens. I'm just going to see what happens. And what I've done is I've locked this layer so I can only paint on this layer. This layer. Artistry of Wolf and Wildlife asks, uh, last year you shared with us a few drawing boards you were working on with your father. It's been a bit since I've heard anything about them. How's that going and when might we see them again? Oh, uh, we gave up on them. <laughs> No, we, uh, um, well, he flew, he went back up north for the winter. Yes. And now he's back. So, so we, uh, we've got them. We've just got to get them, uh, uh, pulled together and finished, marketed. Uh, we're going to market them again. But, uh, they're, they're actually coming out really cool. And I also discovered because I, um, I had to work in the next room while we had Joy Mildenberger here. And, um, I used them, uh, on my other Cintiq as a stand. They worked really great as a stand for my other Cintiq, so that was cool. So 
So can you explain what you're drawing again? I'm drawing a creature. Just having fun drawing a creature. Aaron decided today kind of go back to his roots when we first yep. started the YouTube channel. He used to do a lot of creature design. and Yeah, they're just fun. You just kind of make it up as you go and just have fun with it. That's one of the things I love about creature design. Now, you can get really strict with creature design, too, and be very, very... Uh, uh, follow, you know, the rules of, of understanding anatomy and the physiology of different creatures and that sort of thing. In this case, I was just, I'm just pulling together things that I think look cool. And actually, we have a full course on creature design over at Creature Art Teacher. Uh, that's on sale. And if you use that promo code ARTLOVE, you can get an extra 35% off. And also, I really recommend a woman named by the name of Terrell Whitlatch. Terrell Whitlatch is probably the best creature designer out there, one of the best out there. And uh, she's a good friend of ours. And um, she's uh, she's wonderful. Matter of fact, we might be trying to get her in soon. Yeah, we've got a, we're, we just had an email with her. So we're pretty confident we'll have a course coming from Terrell in the near future. Yeah. And the... Um, we also have uh, Terrell, she, for people who don't know, she designed a bunch of the creatures in Avatar, Star Wars, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. She's Never pretty. Having the, uh, um, the book of uh, Star Wars creatures. Uh, yeah, a lot of those were hers. Yeah, that's crazy. Crazy. Uh, Austin on uh, YouTube asks, does anyone else in the room with you animate? Uh, Nick's got a, a degree in animation. Yep. So I'm rusty, but I definitely have animated. Any plans for a how to draw reptiles course? Yes, we get that. We get that a lot. Reptiles and primates. Uh, and primates. Those are probably going to be the next two animal courses. Yeah. Also going to do a, a drawing at the zoo, drawing animals live. How to do quick sketching. Yeah, I, I wasn't counting that. I was counting as the, you know, the full yeah. animals. But yeah, absolutely. Have you ever considered doing a course on composition? I was just about to ask. <laughs> um, yes. Well, a composition is, kind of falls into a lot of our courses already. You can't talk about painting. You can't talk about drawing. You can't talk about a lot of the things that I teach without talking about composition as well. Whether or not we have an entire course on composition, I guess we could do that. It's just um, it'd take a little while to figure out uh, how to fill that out. Yeah, even my even my future photography course, I have uh, episode plan just on composition and lighting in a photography uh, point of view. If you're watching and you haven't already hit that subscribe button or that bell, please do so. It really helps us out a lot. We're trying to spread the word. We're just a couple hundred away from uh, hitting um, 1 million subscribers. So if you're watching and you want to hit those buttons, the various buttons of that nature, please do so and share the stream. It helps us a lot. We are coming up on uh, 9... 199,000, we're at 999,637. 637, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, I want to ask, have you used Open Tunes before? Oh, I actually, someone asked that earlier and he said no. That's Studio Ghibli's software. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Diego says, new subscriber here. Thanks, Diego. Hey, Diego. If well, thank you. Well, thank you. If you're a new subscriber, Say hi in the comments so we see you. Hello, hello. And if you are a new subscriber after the stream, uh, we always leave these streams available on, on YouTube so you can go back and rewatch all of our past 300 live streams. We've got <laughs> over 400 other videos too on, on all kinds of stuff like Photoshop drawing, TV paint, animation, procreate, procreate dreams. Mm -hmm charcoal drawing watercolor all kinds of uh, animal drawing just art tips aaron's been a professional artist for over 35 years and an animator and uh we really it's our goal to try to 
helped spread the knowledge and spread the word. Vermin said one million. Yes. YouTube question. Thanks for doing this. I'm a current. You're welcome. I'm a current studio art student in college. Any advice? That's just a broad question. Any, Any advice? advice? Mm -hmm. Yes. Make your bed every day. Get up at the same time every day. And draw every day. Yeah, discipline goes a long way. There's something to be said about making your bed every day, which I, I don't always do. But there's something about starting the day right. I know I sound like an old person, old school, which I am. Well, but something about getting that and getting your routine. So much, you know, I, I get so much. I find myself really productive when I hit my routine regularly. Um, so much of art is not about struggling to find or, 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 or a career in art, I should say. You know, we spend a lot of our, our, our time learning in our younger years on how to be more efficient in the way that we create. So like if you see me creating right now, I do the same method every time, whether I'm creating a creature or doing an animal drawing or whatever, when it comes time to do illustration, I've, I've come up with a way of doing it over and over. So I'm not, it, it speeds me up and I'm not searching so much or I can be more, I, it actually allows me to be more creative by doing it the same way because I can spend more time thinking about the creative part of it and not so much about, you know, how am I going to physically make this? If that makes sense. Zandji says, hey, Aaron, Nick. Zandji. How does it feel to be at this milestone? Well, let me tell you. I keep I keep being nervous that it's going to, we're not going to hit it. We're not there till we're there, people. <laughs> yeah. No, but it feels, it feels pretty amazing. It's been a long road. The tiger in your thumbnail on YouTube, is that digital or traditional? That That's the, it's a watercolor one. They're oh, that's good. traditional. Yeah. Now on our, on our YouTube channel in the, in the top, if you go to YouTube slash Aaron Blaze Art, there's, a, there's like a tiger in a hat and he's kind of like got a cup of coffee and all that. He's smoking, I think. Yeah. That's a digital one. That's done in Photoshop. How would you simplify this character for animation? Well, you'd got to you you'd have to really just define the broad shapes first. Um and then it, it's really about getting rid of a lot of detail. Um you know, pencil mileage when it comes to animation uh and keeping a, a schedule is you know, they they fight each other. So you want to you want to get the biggest bang for your buck. If you're uh, if you're paying attention to the counter, we're fifty away from bringing out another maquette. Every hundred, as we get to as we march towards a million, every hundred subscribers. So at at nine at the seven hundred mark, we're going to show another maquette on the screen. Also, the seven hundred club. Hey. Also, let's do this. Um, Post one million in the just either the word or the uh, or the number in the comments, and we're gonna pick someone randomly. We're gonna send them a free Art of Aaron Blaze Volume Two signed art book. Nice. I like that. Which one? Uh, out on the out on the the shelf out there. Let's show them what it looks like. All right. Oh. Oh. So here's our, our new book. 
my new book, uh, Aaron, The Art of Aaron Blades, Volume De. De. And um, it's chock full of images. It's about 250 pages of art. Yep. Sorry, I'm, it's awkward. It's awkward. Uh, it's got production work in it. It's got personal work in it. It's got all kinds of stuff. And uh, so check it out. So what, what's the what's the reward? What is it? Who gets it? Uh, I'm going to pick someone who random in the comments. They're going to post. They're posting a bunch of people already now. If they either write either the word 1 million or the number 1 million, we're going to pick somebody randomly after the stream, and we're going to contact them and send them a, a free book. Awesome. I like it. And if you want to uh, not worry about trying to get picked randomly and you want to order a book, you can order them at creatureartteacher.com slash books. Dustin, I think we have a slide yes, for that. Awesome. Bye. And Aaron has another book available too. So if you check it out, you can see the other books. And thanks everybody for the comments. Uh, Zero Connection says, uh, hi Aaron. Hey, how's it going, eh? Not my intention to paint a negative picture of wildlife, but have you or your crew had any close encounters with animals? Oh yeah. We've had some close encounters, not necessarily dangerous ones, but we've had some really close encounters with lions in Africa while out hunting at night. Uh, I've had close encounters with uh, grizzly bears in Alaska. Um, uh, had one close encounter uh, with a charging elephant in Tanzania once back in 1998. Uh, but in general, everything's been really cool. If you already posted one million, you don't have to keep posting it. One <laughs> yeah, I'd say my closest encounter I've had was a um, sandhill crane with a uh, uh, pair of, with a pair of babies. Like they were like the little family was like as close to me as like maybe that was cool three three feet or so. Yeah, like they were close enough to where I had to actually had to break up the smaller smaller lens I had laid out laid out on the on the ground and was able to shoot photos of the baby and the baby was like right in front of me. Yeah. It was insane. <clears throat> okay, so now I've got I've kind of got a, a a local color kind of thing that I'm digging a little bit. And so I think that's kind of fun. Well maybe actually I'm gonna change the eyes a little. Get a little bit more in the eyes. Go. Twitch comment. This is my first time here, and I just want to say this crab creature is super cool, and I'm inspired. Hey, thank you. Well, I'll thank you. All right, so let's. Uh, I'm going to create a new layer. We're going to go control, and we're going to make a clipping mask out of it. And I'm going to set this to multiply. For those of you that follow me, you know this is my method for creating my first layer of shadows. Once again, doing it the same way each time. And I'm going to think about the light coming in from the right, kind of rear right. So he's going to be in shadow kind of on this side. I'm just going to start roughing in some of these the shadow shapes. Once again, keeping it rough, keeping it quick. <clears throat> do you miss working at disney and would you ever animate something for them again if you were invited to i uh definitely would i'd be interested in doing something for them i don't i miss working well it's 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 better now because our our, our group and our company is growing I really did miss working with a group. That was fun. But now that we have a group, I'm, I'm not missing that so much. So, uh, but there was something really fun about, you know, the camaraderie that we would build 
you know, through making a feature. We're all working the same project and you all come together. We all have common goals and, and there's something really cool about that. We're doing that more and more on here at our company. And, uh, and I love that. Um, but yeah, if Disney had something, you know, it really depends. Cause I, I love what I'm doing now. I mean, I really love it. Someone says this is Mr. Crab in his younger years. <laughs> I remember you saying this is Ryan asking on YouTube. I remember you saying you used to lift weights in the past. Do you think it's important to be physically fit as an artist? I do. And I'm not. And it's so important because I'm feeling it now. I'm paying for that. So, yes. I let myself go and I regret it. But it can always get it back. So, but it's harder when you're older. When you're older. In your volume two book, do you have a favorite art piece in there? Uh, not necessarily. You know, I, I'm 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 much more prolific now than I ever was before. So much so, I don't really think about. You know, I I have fun while I'm making a piece, but then you know, once I'm done, I just I I don't really think about it. You again. don't look back at them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what is the next event you will attend in person in the East Coast, U.S.? Uh, I don't know. We don't have any plans for an East Coast event. We do have a live workshop coming up next month. It's going to be online. It's Appropriate yeah. Dreams Workshop. Dustin, we've got a slide for it. Hey. If you go to creatureartteacher.com slash live, you can sign up for that event. It's February 24th. Spots are limited, and Aaron is going to be teaching you how to animate dialogue in Procreate Dreams, their new animation software. And again, spots are limited for that. That's an online live workshop, and you can learn more at creatureartteacher.com slash live. Uh, when Snow Bear is finished in production, will the short be posted online? At some point, it will be posted online, but we want to make it. We want to have it go through uh, some some promotional gates first. So it'll be. We're going to try to get a run in the theaters. Um, we want to be able to monetize it for a little bit. We're also going to make a course out of out of it on how to create your own animated short. That was a big motivation behind making it. Yep. And if you're a member on our website, you get twice weekly live streams. We stream the making of Snow Bear every Tuesday and Thursday, and those streams are a blast. It's sort of an intimate group. We Aaron answers questions. We talk about behind the scenes stuff. We play music. Um, we're really showing how the sausage is made, so to speak. Yeah. So from the beginning, pre-production all the way through post-production. And someone asked, when will Snow Bear be done? Um, Aaron's shooting for having the animation done by the end of June. That's the goal. And uh, Fingers you know, then, crossed. then we go into post-production. So we're hoping to have everything done by the fall. That's what we're shooting for. Aaron, if you were to animate this character that you're drawing, how would you go about simplifying them for animation? Yeah, that's a that's a question we had earlier. It's it's a matter of, you know, you, you pick out your most important features, right? And then, and then, uh, and then you you hold on to that and you get rid of the rest. Basically, is what it comes down to. So for something like this, this actually it doesn't it wouldn't require too much simplification. There'd be a little bit of a simplification in the in the head. I'd lose a few of those spikes and I'd lose a few of those. Uh, the wispies on the back there, but um, but by and large, it's fairly close to being there. If you're just tuning in, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We're uh, trying to push to a million uh, subscribers. I think we can do it this live stream with your help. Subscribe and share, please. Uh, question: Did you animate 
uh, oh wait, I, I answered. So we addressed that earlier. Someone wanted to know if you animated the dance between Bell and Beast, but oh, yeah. that was a uh, that was James Baxter who did that. Yes. Now you did do like the snowball fight. I did the snowball fight. I did him leading her to her to her room. I did uh, the argument in front of the fireplace um, where she's trying to bandage him. Uh, a lot of different shots in that section. Um, yeah, uh, the, the kill the beast section where the villagers are attacking the the uh, the castle. The few shots that he's he's in that. I did those. Actually, we've got. Don't we have some beast drawings in the other room? We might. Yeah, sure we do. <laughs> All right. Arturo Garcia on Facebook says, congrats on the one million. Thanks. Uh, you guys, you've changed my life for the better so much that I'm stepping into the creative industry. Can't thank you enough. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Can we hit a few more subscribers? All right. 25 more subscribers and we'll show some original drawings and animation from Beauty and the Beast. How about that? Good to it. Sounds good to me. A little bit of a delay on here. Uh, what is your favorite scene you've ever animated when it comes to emotional impact? Oh wow! Uh, there's a. I don't know. I don't know that I have a favorite. You know, there's. I really loved making the bear and the hair. It was a commercial I did for John Lewis back in 2016 uh, for their Christmas campaign. Um, that really had a nice emotional punch to that commercial. And, uh, that was, and it was very held back, subtle animation, but a lot of fun to do. A lot of. We had a Twitch comment earlier, and, and it kind of got scrolled away. So I'm gonna I'm gonna summarize it. <clears throat> they said they wanted to thank you years ago for a comment that you gave them about being a new director, about keeping their ego out of it. Yes. And, and they said that that's been the best advice they've ever gotten, and they continue to use that as their guiding light. So thank you. Oh, good. Be open to new ideas. Be open to ideas that aren't your own. Sometimes an idea will come around and and you thought you thought about that idea, you pitched that idea, but then it's not the right idea for the time. And then, you know, then it might, you know, the story might change, it comes back around again and, you know, you and, and someone else might suggest it and you you, you got to let those types of things go. That was a big one for us. Despite the fact that the final versions of the Disney movies you worked on all got G ratings, did any of the earlier version of the films have darker elements that could have gotten them PG? Not really. We always we always knew who we were catering to. You know, we're catering to our audience, which is eight to twelve. That's our core. And you don't you never want to to you never want to. Uh, whoops, sorry. Uh -oh. You never want to forget your audience, and. You know, family entertainment, a lot of people kind of look down on it. A lot of filmmakers. And it's, to me, it's it's not, it, it's some of the most exciting uh, filmmaking you can do. And um, uh, so, no, I, I, we always kept our, our audience in mind. Question about your courses. Is the complete animation course available in the annual premium membership? Yeah. 
yeah, actually all of our courses are available in that membership, as well as all of the brushes, all of the photo packs, and everything we release over the next 12 months while you're a member, you get included automatically. Yeah. We really so think it's the, sure. best, the best value in art education. And if you use promo code ARTLOVE, you can get 35% off your membership. Twelve more, and we'll show some original drawings. Right on. Uh, I'm what's going... your favorite scene from Emperor's New Groove? I don't. I don't know Emperor's New Groove well enough to have a favorite scene. I love everything with uh, Isma and, and Kronk, though. Oh yeah. It's some of the best casting ever. In a, oh, Disney, yeah. in a Disney in a Disney film. Uh, uh, YouTube says, I know this guy. He's Jar Jar's dad. Yeah. There you go. Uh, do you miss your old friend at Disney? Do I miss my old friend at Disney? Old friends, maybe they met. Uh, most likely. No, because I keep in touch with all my old friends at Disney. No, we all keep in touch with one another. Oh, commenting on the uh, the new group question. Uh, Della says, "Kronk at the restaurant with Isma and and the chef." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My my personal favorite. One of my of uh Kronk has to be the uh when they're in the lab and Nizma finally realizes what she can do, it's like, oh Neo the palace. <laughs> I can feel it. <laughs> so I'm just going very quickly now. Just laying in little highlights here and there. If you're watching this, hit that subscribe button on YouTube and, uh, you know, help us spread the word. We're getting, we're getting really close to being 300 away. Almost there. Aaron, was Bear in the Hair the last animated production you made on paper? I remember from another live stream you mentioned you picked up TV paint after that point. It really was, yeah. That was the last thing I did on paper. So now I've kind of got a, a rough. I've, I've, I've put in a layer of uh, that. I've I've sent the blend mode. To overlay and so I'm hitting a few highlights here and there and now I'm going to paint right over the top of the uh, let me get in here too I'm going to paint right over the top of the of the drawing layer now You're 300 away from a million right on sure what do we got which one is this oh this one on the label beast animation. So. Yeah, this is uh you will join me for dinner. That's not a request. It's forbidden. Yep. Not sure how well they can see this, but I might have to move the camera. That's okay. Like right here. There you go. Perfect. So this is where he says he's at the door and he says, You will join me for dinner. 
These are all. Uh oh, we're losing data. That's not a request. So this is the original animation of that shot. And she's in the foreground. And so I would draw it very quickly in red. And the cleanup artist would come through. I tied some of it down, but then I had to move on. Interesting. It, gets, it, it does, the data stream does get choppy when you move fast. Interesting. I wonder if it's a frame rate thing. It must be. Yeah, so right here, if you look on the side, these are called charts. And you'll see every key, every key drawing in the stack has got a chart. And what that does is uh, it's a roadmap for the my assistants and other cleanup artists to come through. And it tells them where the in-between drawings go between keys. So I'll have a circle around the, uh, you know, this key right here, and then the next key will have a circle. And so between those two keys, there's going to be more drawings. And so this is the map on where to put those drawings as far as where they're located in relation to one another. Is it halfway in between? Is it one third in between? That sort of thing. And it shows you how to break down the, 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 the timing. And so, um, and then right here, you can see I have a little, little note where I say the blinks are on thirds, meaning when he goes to close his eyes, his eye closes one third before it's closed all the way. And then when it opens, it opens one third before it's open all the way. And that's how I would get a blink. Um, can you put that back on the yeah. screen? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab a round brush and I'm going to I'm going to start defining kind of a rim lighting effect on here. I always like doing rim lighting. Yeah, I'm always a sucker for good, good rim lighting. Uh, have you ever considered working for Japanese animation groups? Have I ever considered working for a Japanese studio? No. No, because I'm I'm stuck here in the States, so have you been to Studio Ghibli? I have been to Studio Ghibli, yes. I've met Miyazaki and had a wonderful time. <laughs> Did you like Brother Bear? No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Silverdale asked, uh, what did you do between leaving Disney and starting Creature Art Feature? I worked for a company called Digital Domain for a couple of years. And uh, we were developing movies with them. I was a creative lead in the studio. And um, uh, the company, we had, we developed four movies to make. And, uh, and we had picked one of those four to actually go into production. Or pre-production, I should say. And... Um, uh, while we were making that film, the company went bankrupt. Yeah. They mismanaged uh, some of their their funding, and uh, ended up going bankrupt. So I lost my job. So that was a big that was a big impetus for for creating uh, Creature Art Teacher because I didn't want to work for executives anymore. I didn't want to be. Uh, I didn't want to put my future in the hands of other people just you know deciding my fate when uh i may have not done anything wrong and so uh, that i really wanted to go out and do something on my own and if i if i succeeded it was because of my work and if i failed it was because of my work so yeah so that was our our drive there yeah that was a crazy day it was a drag yeah it was a big drag yeah, because that uh, both Dad and I worked uh, under the same same uh, 
roof had digital domain. Yeah. Uh, Dad was the uh, animation director, and I was uh, part. I was a three D deaf artist. Which, if you ever saw a movie in three D, like with the glasses and all in the theater, that's what I would do. I would convert two D film into three D. And uh, yeah. And we both we both suffered the same. Yeah, it, it was movies. crappy. How long on that stack of beast drawings would you say those drawings took you to finish that shot? I took about a week to do that. And was that on twos or ones? That was mostly on twos. There's a few spots where it went to ones where he stood up fast. But that was mostly on twos. Paying for ones is expensive, so Disney... Didn't like us to do ones if we didn't need to do it. Which Disney movie had the best character animation and art direction? Ooh, boy, that's a tough one. Uh, probably Sleeping Beauty is one of the best for character animation and art direction. For contemporary films, I think... Uh, I think Mulan was one of the best as far as consistency goes. I think um, Princess and the Frog was really strong. Um, Aladdin was very strong. There's a lot. Yeah, it's kind of fun. All right, so I'm going to just going to start working some of these. Karen, I found out today from a video that you have a boat. Does it have a name? No, I've never named my boat. Isn't that like bad luck? Yeah, that's how they say, but I don't believe in luck either. So there you go. It says the guy who was lost at sea for three days. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that had nothing to do with luck I'll tell you that uh, did you ever rotoscope uh, no I've never rotoscoped but I have uh, used live action reference I've had my fair share of uh, rotoscoping back in digital domain days yeah Ryan wants to know any specific moments while you were at Disney where you you were personally blown away by someone else's drawing ability. Oh yeah, Mark Henn, Glenn Keane, uh, Press Romanios was a a major, incredible artist uh, who Press has since passed away. He was a close friend of mine, and um, Press oh could draw like no other. I mean, he was just in, insanely good. Aaron, after Brother Bear, do you still want to direct a big feature film again? Thank you for sharing your art and knowledge with all of us. I would, I would definitely love to do another uh, feature. Not necessarily for a big company, but I would definitely like to do another feature. And I don't, I'm, I'm, there, I think there's still some possibilities out there for us to do something down the road as well. So here, I'm just highlighting different areas where it's going to get reflected light. Actually, I want to get... Come on, froze up on me. There we go. Uh, would you ever create your own animation studio? Well, we kind, of, we kind of have it now. Not in the sense of what you're probably thinking, but we kind of have our own studio now 
And uh, I would love to do it. And I think we'll, we, uh, we've got some ideas for projects coming up that I think are going to be really cool down the road. Jelly Belly wants to know. Jelly Belly, that's what I've got. Any advice on getting art done faster? It takes me weeks to get something done sometimes. Well, consistency. That's what I was talking about earlier. You probably weren't there. But a big part of, um, you know, being a, an artist that's been at it for a long time, it's not so much that I'm learning, to, you know, I, I, you do learn to draw better, but you learn methods. You, mer you learn uh, how to do things quicker. You find ways of doing things efficiently. And that comes with time. So yes, you, that's the best piece of advice I can give you is give yourself the time to find your methods. So what I'm doing right now is I'm I'm drawing I've got the blend mode on my brush turned to color dodge. So what I'm doing is I'm really burning in the color where the light is. Actually I want that to be kind of a bluer light. Yeah, so I can I can build up texture. Come on, help us get to a million, folks. We're getting I got some, there. I got some celebrating to do. 270 away. So if we don't make it, we're not celebrating? No, we're not. <laughs> Actually, if we don't make it, everyone in this room is fired. That's the... <laughs> Including Aaron. Yeah, that's the downside. Uh... But if it becomes no more... <laughs> What we should have done is rigged up some scenario in which you were drawing over a platform that was slowly descending into spikes. <laughs> Don't worry, the spikes are made out of rubber. But the catch is, every time someone likes, you get lower. <laughs> and I feel the, yeah, the, every time there's a like, it's a there's a like button it just uh it acts the acceleration like it goes faster and faster and faster so eventually yeah luis asks hey aaron i want to get your procreate dreams course but i'm not sure why there's two options uh and one is five dollars more so we have aaron has a one dollar procreate dreams class available but it's streaming only so you get to you get lifetime access to the streaming for one dollar if you add five dollars more you get lifetime downloads so you can download and keep the files so that's that's really the only difference it's the same information but with for five dollars more you get to download you can actually and download it and yeah so i hope that clears it up for you martin burger says i like the spike idea <laughs> i'm sure you do martin martin and earlier he said well hello there Yes, we uh, we weren't expecting to do this, but we thought, you know what? Nick brought it up. He said, hey, we're close to a million. Let's do a live stream. Well, it just happens to fall on a Friday, and I was like, to let it go unmarked just seemed. 
just wrong. It's like so wrong, man. Have you ever had any thoughts about directing a Babar movie, uh, like Babar the Elephant or Babar the Adventures of Badu? No. <laughs> Short answer, no. Never thought about it, right? Never thought about it. Do you have a favorite scene from uh, the Once Upon a Studio short? No. Uh, someone asked us earlier, Lucy, I'll, so I'll address it. Have you ever tried Clip Studio Paint? And if not, would you consider it? Um, he's I not, definitely would consider it, yeah. yeah. I'd definitely just, try it on a future stream or, or video. Yeah, I just, um, I, I use TV Paint. I don't need to use anything else, and so I don't. That's part of being efficient. I don't bog myself down with lots of different softwares. Any plans to bring back the Art of Aaron Blaze Volume 1 in stock again? Uh, yeah, we hope so. Um, <clears throat> speaking of which, Aaron has two books available. Dustin, we've got a slide for this. If you go to creatureartteacher.com slash books, we currently have two Aaron Blaze art books available. We've got his 100 drawings book, which is all pen and ink uh, drawings. And we've got his Art of Aaron Blaze Volume 2, which covers all kinds of art across his career over 35 years as a professional artist. Um, as far as bringing back, and you can get those both at creatureartteacher.com slash books. We also have a limited quantity of signed copies available as well. Uh, as far as bringing back volume one, that's definitely something we want to do. Um, hardback books are expensive, so we're just debating whether we maybe bring it back as a paperback or, you know, we're, we're going to maybe do a wait list and see if people are, if there's enough interest and uh, maybe we'll work on bringing it back. Yeah. But no immediate plans. Do you know about thylacine or Tasmanian wolves at all? Not very much. Other than I don't think they're extinct. I think they're out there somewhere. We actually, our friends from Procreate are based in Tasmania. And they've promised to take us wolf hunting. Not, not... Not to hunt them, but to find them. To find them, yes. I do think they're out there. We're going to go exploring the wilds of Tasmania. Have you seen the Brain Wolf Load of Shore? Yes, I love it. Yeah, it didn't get a nomination either, which I thought was kind of a bummer. Yeah. Full shame. It should have been. Nor was Mushka. I don't know if Mushka qualified. I don't know if he put it out there to... It might not have been in this this year. Yeah. Basically. Okay. Or I, I don't know if he did like the theater run and the festivals and all that stuff. I'm assuming he didn't. Assuming. Only assume. So everybody who's watching, uh, do us a favor, post some comments and hit that share button because we're uh, we're about 240 away. We started with 500 to go. Just having fun with some of these little highlights, creating textures in here. Question, does Disney own the rights to King of the Elves? If you ever wanted to do another short film, could you do King of the Elves, for instance? No, they, well, they, they own the rights to the version that we were creating. King of the Elves is actually owned by Philip K. Dick Estate. So we, we licensed it from them. Disney did when I was with Disney. And then we came up our ver with our version, and then they let the license... Or the option, I should say. They let that go. Uh, Keith Rutherford says, love your work. Wondering of uh, the status of art storage. 
Art Story was something that we tried to get off the ground. We did a, a Kickstarter campaign for it uh, to help get the the basically the pitch together to get it picked up by another studio. And uh, I got it out there. We got the pitch together, and I pitched it at Warner Brothers. I pitched it at Fox. I pitched it at uh, DreamWorks. Uh, I pitched it Paramount all over too, the place, think, right? Par Paramount. And, um, and it was turned down. It was either, hey, we already have something like this in development, or um, they felt it was too much uh, like an art lesson. And, and they were telling me this before I even was able to pitch it to them. And so um, it's hard pitching something in Hollywood because you get these executives that just, they think they, they know when they don't. <laughs> so, uh, so the status of art story now is that we still have it. Uh, it just doesn't have any traction and I would love to still make it. Um, but I just don't know. I don't know if that's going to happen. Never say never. Never say never. Do you think Snow Bear is related to Kunai? <laughs> no. Two different parts of the world. For legal reasons, they can't be related. That's right. Hey, Julia just hopped on to Facebook. Julia. Hey, Julia. Hey. Now. It's late. They could be related in so fact is that we're all related and it's part of the great circle of life. That's so true. in that regard. Sixty more subscribers and we'll show them a cat. Right on. Oh, my sister just subscribed. <laughs> hey, sis. I don't know why it took her 10 years to do that. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> what type of music do you listen to while working? How involved are you in the story of your short film? Very involved, and I like to listen to a lot of different things. It depends on my mood. Usually, lately, it's been a lot of, like chill chill out electronic kind of lounge music kind of stuff but um you get very deeply involved with uh with the score and science do you use right now if you're looking if you're talking about my cintiq i'm using a wacom cintiq and it is a wacom cintiq 32 pro they don't make these anymore um the next the the they make a 27 inch now um but they came out with the 32 a few years ago and we we loved it we picked it up and um, and I've been on it ever since. It's a really nice pen display. Pen display. Uh, pen display. So, yeah. Question for you, Dustin, uh, on YouTube: Should I keep my Canon EOS D eleven hundred, or should I get a new one? Um, D eleven hundred. Don't recognize that particular camera. That's the one that I I had. A, well, I had a seven. I had a 70, a 5D, no, 70. And they, they said 70? They said D1100. Oh, oh D1100. Yeah, if I were to guess, that would be a, um, a DSLR, um, in which DSLR cameras um, are definitely aging. Uh, the mirror, mirrorless is, is definitely on the rise. But, um, I mean, if you have the budget to go, to go, uh, 
make your way down the mirrorless route, I would definitely recommend going down that road since uh, mirrorless is going to be the new DSLR. Um, but the meantime, what, what what you got now, I think will should work just fine. Honestly, uh, I would invest more into uh, into a better lens if you uh, if you're looking to build a new lens. Yeah, if your budget is to get a whole new camera, then get a camera. But if you're looking to keep what you have, go with a new lens, right? Yeah. Because the because the camera is is what helps you with like uh, tracking your focus and also with your first speed and all that sorts of stuff. But the sharpness and the quality of of your photo, um, most of that is be uh, benefits from from the quality of the lens that you're using. Yeah, focus more on the on the lens more than the camera. Yeah, oh my god, the uh, oh god, that's uh, lens, lens are super important. I've seen ancient cameras uh, fitted with lens adapters taking absolutely stunning photos with a, with a good lens. Absolutely. I, I still primarily use one of those underwater instant cameras, is my main. <laughs> I've got three shots left that I've been holding on to since the late <laughs> 1990s. Citizen Zero is asking where, where I'm at. I'm right, I'm, I'm right here. I'm, I'm over here. here. I'm right here. Hi. How you doing? Yeah, I'll definitely be going into further detail about cameras and lenses and all that sort of stuff in my upcoming uh photography course into uh wildlife it's going to be introduction to photography very excited to get celebrate that. good times come, come on, on. what bird is out of you aaron you know? Uh um a uh, hornbill. Zazu is a hornbill. Two hundred and fifty, two hundred and fifty to go. Almost there. Oh, thanks, Citizen Zero. Mr. X Nelson says, hello, Snow Bear Game. Hello. From Nelson in Nottingham. Nottingham? Whoops. Wrong way. I'm going to blue this up a little bit. There we go. Get a little bluer. Uh, Life Force is wondering who is the other gentleman? That gentleman, uh, there is no other gentleman. If you're talking about Steve, that's Steve. But... <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah, so we got Steve right here, right next to me. And then over, all the way over to the right, we have Nick and Claudia. Claudia is the finest gentleman of us all. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> He's a handsome woman. But this is the whole Creature Art Teacher crew, so that's why we wanted to all be here as we hit a million. So smash that subscribe button. There, I said it. I've been holding off saying it. Now you can do it. <laughs> if you've been waiting to subscribe, I said the magic phrase. Smash. Nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, my other sisters just subscribed too. I still don't know why it's taken wow. them 10 years. Keeping it in the family. 
Martinberger says, hey, Claudia, and imaginary Steve. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we, we applied a, a, a filter on the lens that uh, reveals imaginary people. <laughs> so for people just joining us, uh, Aaron is drawing a creature today. Um, yeah, it's... Uh... We're about to cross a million subscribers on our YouTube channel with your help. Thank you. Uh, feel free to spread the word. And um, we are, we, Aaron wanted to take it back to his roots. We used to do a lot of this type of drawing where he would just come up with a creature and draw it. So that's what we're doing today. We've been doing a lot of animation lately. So I thought we'd mix it up. Yep. It's going to be vintage. And for people who don't know, Aaron has a website with over 700 hours of art and uh, art lessons and education on our website. And we're running a sale right now, uh, early Valentine's Day sale. <clears throat> if you use promo code ARTLOVE, all one word, you can get 35% off any course or a membership. And those can also be sent as a gift. So do with that what you will. Do it. Do it. Just do it. And if you're already subscribed, hit that share button. Share this stream. What sound does a zebra make? <laughs> that wasn't bad. <laughs> Does this make horse noises? No. <laughs> yeah, they kind of do. It's yeah. not really. It's not really a horse noise. It's a. <laughs> it's like it's hard to explain. We're getting there, people. 237 to go. You Twitch comment. I thought I was in the African savanna for a second. That was so. There's our zebras. Sounds like dogs, but it's a zebra. To be honest, when we were there, and I've the two times I've been, they really weren't that vocal. Like they weren't making a lot of noise. No, they only really do it when they get, you know, chased or disturbed or whatever, or if they're fighting amongst amongst each other. But even when they were running around, they weren't. Yeah, like yeah, you hear them a little bit here and there, but yeah, you just don't hear them that much. Now, having said that, the hippos, on the other hand, were super vocal. They're like, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. yeah, farting all the time. Yeah. Aaron should do a class on how to sound like different animals. What a pro. <laughs> <laughs> yep, someone said they sound a bit like sleeping dogs Yeah, when they're dreaming. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's a, that's a good... Yeah. A good comparison. Yeah, we need a new plaque for the back wall, people. Help us get to a million. One million so followers. So we can get to the uh, the gold plaque. Oh my God, he said the, the hippos are French. They do. They sound like laughing Frenchmen. That that was the joke we made the whole time we were there. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 in the um, coming back from the game hunt or the game drives where you're looking at the animals and uh, shooting photographs of them. And we would come back and the, it would be dusk. And so the, the visibility would get to be lower and you would see what looks like a big boulder and all of a sudden it would move. Yeah. And it was a hippo. 
Yeah, and you don't want to get chased. No, nope, they they're pretty. They're a lot faster than you expect. Yep. And um, and they're very very territorial. Well, they kill or hurt more people in Africa each year than crocodiles do. Mm -hmm. Julio says, hey, Mr. Blaze, I was watching. Some hey, how's it going, eh? I was just watching some of your videos on your YouTube catalog, and I noticed the stream was live, so I thought I would tune in and show some support. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, if you're already a subscriber, uh, do us a favor. Maybe post this stream on your other social media platforms if you're able. Uh, we want to spread the word, and, you know, we've crossed 700 videos on the channel, and we've got lots, lots more tips to come. Uh, Taku asks, any update on the fold, uh, folding wooden pop-up storage thingy? Wow, sure that's the second time. It, uh, that you and your dad's been working. We no. actually we mentioned that earlier. They're still in the works. Uh, no updates, though. No. No updates yet. But soon. Soon and for the rest of your life. Twitch comment, this guy looks like he would be very tasty with some lemon and butter. <laughs> yes. He's a prawn. Once we hit uh, 9,999 and 800, so we're uh, 31 away from that, we'll bring out another maquette. All right. Another, okay. Maybe some original Disney drawings. We'll let you guys decide. Let's flop it around here. Let's see what we got. Now, why do you flop the drawing? Just to see it in a new light. And, and it, 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 for whatever reason, it, it shows off any kind of drawing problem you might have. It's, it's, a, it's an age old technique. A lot of artists do it. You flip your drawing so you can see the mistakes. I actually discovered that method on my own as a kid by accident. Because I lived in a, we lived in a little trailer and I wanted to get back from my painting to get a good view of it to see how it was looking. And I couldn't get far enough back. So I, I went into the, uh, put up a mirror so I could double the distance. And when I looked at my image in the mirror, it looked horrible. And I discovered that you look at an image that you're creating in the mirror and you see it in a new light. So ever since then, I've gotten in the habit of looking at my images in reverse. Uh, what keyboard shortcut flips the canvas? Uh, I just, I don't know. I don't know about the, the shortcut, but I, I just go up to transform and... and Reverse it. We're 25 away from a maquette. 225 away from a million. Come on, people. Help us. Spread the word. Spread the way. We're going to be sitting here at 11 o'clock tonight. <laughs> We're five away. <laughs> We're two hey. people away. Pour me a drink. <laughs> What's it going to take? <laughs> With me in, me in the corner, just face first on, on the dead. <laughs> Someone said you could set up hotkeys really easily to do that flipping. Do you ever do that? No. I, I just, yeah, I'm kind of set in the way that I do stuff, but um, yeah, I do have, I do use hotkeys, but not for everything. Is there any chance we can do a little recap and show them the layers, the progress of how we've come so far? Oh, sure. Why should I? Why do some animated movies have directors of photography? What is their role? They are there, that's usually for a CG animated film, and they're there for, they're, they're, looking basically to create the 
the compositions, the cinematography of the film. Yeah, isn't it like they judge like what what kind of a millimeter of lens they should use? And like yeah, it's a lot of that kind of stuff. Yeah, because it's all virtual. My other sister just subscribed too. Wow, I didn't know you had this many sisters. <laughs> Well, what's funny is, like I said, 10 years and you're just now uh -huh, hopping on the bandwagon. <laughs> Thank you very much. They're like, they're like, we will unsubscribe. <laughs> Chocolate is uh, recommend every five subs, Aaron, Nick, and Dustin take a shot. <laughs> there you go. You know, it's actually, was... it's actually against YouTube's uh, terms and conditions to drink on video. Oh, there you go. Really? You know, you get in trouble if you do that. <laughs> oh martin says maybe i should ask my brother-in-law if he wants to follow Aaron? i was just gonna say wait a minute your brother-in-law yeah exactly. <laughs> Aaron and i are brothers-in-law that's for people who don't know yes we are married to sisters Julio says, like, subscribe, and share. Thank you. Thank you. Public surface announcement. Everyone, please let your sisters know about this channel and have them subscribe. <laughs> Is that a Martin joke? No, someone else. <laughs> oh. My sisters are commenting. I just got my husband to subscribe. I'm getting my friend to subscribe. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Listen, if one person gets one person to subscribe, we'll be at two million before the end of the stream. <laughs> what is that, uh, how's that going to go, Mulan? A single grain of rice can tip the scale. Yes. Single here, right? <laughs> Aaron, have you ever animated Winnie the Pooh, or do you want to animate Winnie the Pooh? I've never animated. I've drawn Winnie the Pooh. Didn't you do a little flip test with him on TikTok? I did not. I thought you did. No, not Winnie the Pooh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was I'm, like I'm two talking frames. like, it was yeah, like a two flip. drawings. That, to me, that's not animating. But, yeah, I did, I did a couple of, like, a squash and a stretch uh, expression. Yes. So technically, I guess I have, but not really. Not really. I think Vedanta finally subscribed. Hey! <laughs> That's my wife, for those of you that are wondering. <laughs> Selena has refused. <laughs> I refuse. Selena's my wife. Someone says, this kind of looks like a cross between Sebastian and Aquaman. Oh, there we go. Oh, interesting. A little bit of Predator in there with the... Who animated Abu in Aladdin? That was uh, Rick Farmelo, I think. Oh, no. No, that was Duncan Marjorie Banks. Rick Farmelo did the, did the uh, carpet. Pretty sure. Does Achilles have a YouTube account? No, but that's a good idea. I bet you he'd hit a million faster than... Yeah, he would. So Duncan Marjorie Banks did Abu, and he also did Sebastian, the crab. For people just joining us, Aaron has a website where we teach art and animation and drawing and painting and all kinds of 
related stuff. And right now we've got a character design course that is only $1. If you go to creatureartteacher.com slash learn, you can get Aaron's character design course for only $1. That's over uh, 20 videos and 16 hours of lessons for a dollar. It's ridiculously cheap. And it's an incredibly well-reviewed class, by the way, too. If we do say so ourselves. But we don't need to. It's the people that take the classes. <laughs> Getting very loose with the drawing at this point. Aaron, do you know who animated Mulan's grandmother? Mulan's grandmother. That was uh, Jeffrey Vareb. And uh, for people who don't know, Aaron animated Yao, which we showed the maquette of Yao earlier, as well as all the ancestor ghosts in Mulan. He did all of those. And then uh, in Aladdin, you did Raja the Tiger and a bunch of Jasmine. I did. I did. Yeah. In, in Beauty and the Beast, he animated the Beast. And uh, Lion King, he did Young Nala. And in Pocahontas, you animated Pocahontas. And I feel like there's one I'm forgetting. And, and also... You directed Brother Bear, obviously. Yes. So Jeffrey Verb, who did The Grandmother, also did Chifu. The, the, uh, the jerky uh, general's right-hand man there. Eight more subscriptions and we'll bring out another maquette. All right. I'm just creating texture on the back with using reflected light to show off the texture. Someone from my school did Flit and the Raccoon in Pocahontas. Flit was done by Dave Proxma. And the Raccoon was done by Nick Ranieri. Yeah, maybe they were an assistant or cleanup. Maybe. I'm not sure how I'm remembering all these names. Yeah, because most streams you can't. No. I got enough sleep and getting good sleep. That's key. How did you get those weird reflections in the ice for Brother Bear? We drew them. That's how we drew them. Yeah. No computer effect? No, no. When you see that distortion, that's how we drew it. I heard Glenn Keane once say that uh, Pocahontas was the hardest character he ever animated. Was that true for you as well? Yeah, she was really hard, and I and I got to say one of the one of the films I least enjoyed the most. I I liked you know, I liked working with Glenn on that. I was one of the animators of Glenn of, uh, of Pocahontas with Glenn, but that was a really held back, very very uh, subdued animation film and uh it just, for me it wasn't very enjoyable to work on <clears throat> when you directed brother bear did you get much time to work as an animator and if so what character or scenes did you animate i i didn't get much time but i did towards the end of uh animation rough animation production there was a few periods where the my meetings uh slowed down and so I took a couple of shots of Kenai the bear and I animated, and I had one of Tanana. When Kenai first wakes up and you see his eyes open or the, it looks like you're seeing through his eyes and they open and you see Tanana stand up into the shot and she wrings out the wet cloth and then she walks towards him. I animated that. And then all the stuff where Kenai 
is hearing the chipmunks talk and he's leaning over the log and he goes, you just talked. I animated all that. So it wasn't very much. It was just something to, and then when he, after she leaves and she, he, she leaves, uh, Tanana leaves him sitting by the river uh, and he's yelling out to her. I, I animated that stuff too. It wasn't very much. That was all, uh, uh, Byron Howard's character, and I didn't want to take a lot of his work. Byron's a much better animator than I could ever dream of being, and so he's uh, pretty much a genius. 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 Well, 200 to go. 200. Which cat do you want to show, Aaron? Let's show Simba. That's a from the Lion King. Sure. So I was one of the animators on the Lion King. I created Simba. I mean, I created Nala, young Nala. Uh, and we've got a Nala sculpture. But we've also got Simba. He was the big star. So I thought everyone loves to see Simba. And uh, this is another original maquette from the film. This was made for the artists. Uh, Mark Henn, who just retired from Disney after 43 years. Uh, Mark Henn created uh, Simba, young Simba. Adult Simba was done by Ruben Aquino. But um, I was there, or a lot of us were there, when uh, Mark first shot the scene where Simba's trying to wake up his dad after the after the wildebeest stampede and there wasn't a dry eye in the house when we, we saw it for the first time in pencil test form it hadn't been cleaned up yet it was just rough animation and everybody was bawling their eyes out so but here's this is the simba very nice what's nice about stuff like this you know is you look at the even though this is a it's a, it's a cartoon right but there's there's anatomy in there and all that anatomy you know all that knowledge comes from all the study that we did of lions. We brought lions into the studio. So all that study we did before we started animating. And you kind of strip away all the stuff you don't need and you keep the stuff you want or you do need and that becomes the character. And then here's Nala who's, she's not painted, but they go together. The two of them sit together on the shelf so so there they are got it and uh so that's nala and then that was simba yeah you and mark worked together in a lot of projects yeah mark and i worked a lot together and it was really cool i had a really f great surprise i went out to uh wyoming recently uh i was hired to do um for an art conference they were having out there. They hired me to come out and do some demos and do some lessons uh, in central Wyoming. And uh, this was last year. And I went out and did it. And Mark was one of the people there. Mark was one of the, uh, not one of the instructors. He was one of the students. I ended up buying one of his paintings while we were there. Yeah, so... Uh, as far as working together, Mark did Jasmine and you did Raja. Yeah. He did Young Simba. You did Young Nala. Exactly. He did Bell and you did Be Beast. Exactly. So you guys were very we worked, close together. We worked a lot together. And uh, I learned a lot from Mark. Mark was a veteran animator. I mean, he'd been animating for years by the time I came around. So he had a lot to teach all of us. And, uh, and he was really generous with his time and knowledge and... It was great. How old were you when you started animating at Disney? Uh, when I started, uh, when I started at Disney, I was 20 years old when I did my internship. And then I was 21 when I started full time. And then, uh, when I got promoted to animator, I think I was 22. And your first character you animated was... First character I animated was Roger Rabbit. 
as an animator. Let us know in the comments where you're watching from. I know we've got an international audience. So we're having some fun with this. This is kind of starting to come together kind of cool. Getting there. It's getting there. What's the size? Speaking of which, what's the size of the canvas? This is want? 18 by 24 inches at 300 DPI. Hello, dog. I'll be right back. I need to go. Oh, I know what that means. What? I'll be right back. <laughs> we got people watching from Jacksonville, Florida. You're right up the road. Belgium. Uh, Kenai, Alaska. No way. That's awesome. Uh, Montreal, Canada. Montreal. New York, New York. Ireland. Philadelphia, West Palm Beach, the Netherlands, Vancouver. Florida, South Africa, hello. Hello. I love Montreal. Finland, Northern Cali, Poland, Athens, Greece, Julia. Hello, Julia. UK. You okay? Martin Berger says North Pole, but I'm suspicious. <laughs> Guatemala, Nairobi, Kenya. One of my favorite cities. I love Nairobi. Brazil, Rio Grande do Sul. Man, I love I love Nairobi. Austin, Texas. More like Austin, Texas. Australia. Brazil. Sweden. Eden. My parents have the Roger Rabbit DVD movie and case, and it has behind the scenes of all the animations and live action production. Yeah, so Aaron worked on the shorts. Um, yes, I worked on the shorts. I didn't work on the feature. I was an intern, actually. I was training in animation when the uh, feature came out. And we All of us interns went and saw it in the theater when it came out, 1988. I'm just trying to get a little bit of, give the hands a little bit of love. Louisville, Kentucky, Ukraine, Louisville, India. Slovenia, Mexico, Indiana. And that's what I love about these streams. It's yeah, just, me too. What's cool about this is just, you know, putting up videos on YouTube is great, but when we live stream, just getting the, to interact with the audience. Maybe we'll uh, we can show the first couple of minutes of Snow Bear or something. Yeah, that'd be cool. That's so fun. we are 185 away from a million. So at the next uh, nine at the 9,900 mark, we'll show a little bit of Aaron's animated film that he's working on, Snow Bear. How about that?
which is looking so wild, Aaron. That's awesome. YouTube comment. Thank you. Can you tell us about the art you're working on, asked Ted. Yeah, it's uh, we just decided to create, to make a, a crazy creature. So there we go. There's our crazy, I'll do a little pan and scan. Just a crazy looking creature. Uh, it started out as a scribble. This is kind of my method. I start out um, just kind of scribbling and then I start to kind of refine it. And this is what we ended up with. Um, if I, where am I? There we go. Let's take that. We'll take all of this. So if I turn that off, Oh, I turned it sideways. That's right. So these are all earlier scribbles. Um, this is where it starts. It looks like this. And from there, I start refining and adding color and value and light. And here we are. <clears throat> now, what I'd like to do is start adding a little bit of atmosphere. I'm going to jump into my brushes, y'all. Hill, hill, hill. Okay, all right. How close is Snow Bear to being finished, would you say? Snow Bear is about five months from being finished, animation-wise. Six months. Uh, hopefully by July. So end of June. And, uh, and then we need to do final mixing, scoring, and sound effects. And if you're watching, hit that subscribe button, please. It helps us a lot. We're getting close Smash to a million. It. Smash it. Hello? <laughs> Is this creature underwater? Yeah, I'm kind of thinking maybe. That was very John Wick of you. <laughs> I kind of think it is. That's why you said it, because I was thinking the same thing. I'm thinking maybe. People keep asking me. My bad. Am I underwater? Yeah, I think I'm underwater. Hey, Aaron, can you tell us how do you avoid burnout uh yeah um first of all i really love what i do so i don't get burned out doing that um it's like how do you how do you keep from getting burned out breathing i just like i like doing what i'm doing um that being said i've had days. i don't i don't get all hung up about having to be at the desk all the time you know people you know especially young people they say you know they think oh i've heard that i've got, I've got to draw every day and if i'm not drawing that i'm you know i'm not learning and yeah that's you know it's that's not always true you, you, you give yourself a break and so i try to give myself breaks when i can and uh and if i don't feel like it i don't fight it you know so there's days where i don't feel like it now there's most days, I don't have that problem anymore. So, uh, you know, but a lot of times, like on a weekend, that's where I, I'll beat myself up on it because um, I'll tell myself, okay, this weekend I gotta, I'm going to work on it uh, to get ahead. And I'll go to sit down and go, nope, not feeling it. And so I'll go take a ride in the woods or something on a bike. But um, you just got to listen to listen to your brain. You know, that's all, I got. that's all I got to say about that. Sylvia says, he looks like he's about to throw a baseball. Yeah, I didn't know what to do with his hands. I had him holding the reins of like a giant seahorse or something. And and then it just devolved from there. So now he's, um, he's, what he he's is, nervously actually. playing with his fingers. He's an underwater pitcher. Right? Yeah. <laughs> he's just getting ready to go into his wind up. It's a pitcher of water. Yeah. Ah, that's good. <laughs> Steve, you're fired again. 
I, I also think back on the burnout question, going back to what you were talking about earlier, yeah, having a routine. Yeah, that's a big part of it. And just being disciplined and just treating it. There's one thing to say to not get hung up about drawing every day, and there's another. The other side of that coin is making yourself draw every day. Right. You know. Yeah. Even when you don't feel like it, and pushing through. There is that. I mean, one of the things, and I was going to say this when you were talking about it earlier. You know, um, you've been a professional artist your whole life. I've worked self-employed in the arts uh in one capacity for another pretty much my whole adult life and the thing that i've noticed not that i had any great skill set beyond other people as far as talent level goes but a lot of artists are flaky and they're not disciplined and right you know not, not i don't mean that derogatorily because artists my all my friends are artists but there's um there's a menta there's a certain mentality of like oh this free spirited art sort of vibe which is great and awesome for creativity and to have as a as a hobby of an artist or you know and and I encourage people to do what they're passionate about yeah um, you got to you got to treat but, it like a job but it's different to have it as a career that's right. exactly what I was exactly. going to say and yeah. and making art a career requires as much discipline as any other profession. Yep, you're right. It really does. If not, I would say more so because there's a, you know, to be a professional artist, you have to have your, your you almost have to have a sales hat on too. You know, you're, you're, yep. you're trying to think about um, not only can you make the best drawing, but can you pitch it as, to your art director if you're in a studio or can you pitch it to a client if you're uh you know if you're an ad agency or something along those lines totally agree kimberly sa kimberly says you have the most generous online school in the world it's five star content and it's next level oh thank you thank you so much uh, for people who don't know uh, if you go to creatureartteacher.com and use promo code ARTLOVE, you can get 35% off any course or even our memberships, which gets you everything on the website. Art love, all one word. Wasn't that the name of that animated project we did? Uh, no, that was Spread the Love. Oh, yeah. Or Share the Love, something like that. Spread the love. Seventy-five more, and we'll show either some original drawings or some uh, another maquette. Or oh, wait, we said we we're going to show Snow Bear. That's right. We'll yeah, we're going to show Snow Bear. Where are we at? What's we're our count? Eight twenty-six. Eight twenty-six. Eight twenty-six. Come on, people. Help us get there. Almost there. Eight twenty-seven. <laughs> Can we see the snow bear orca statue in the back, pretty please? Oh yeah. <clears throat> this is made out of felt, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You felt it. This is a this is just to show not for the yeah this is for this was done by one of our our followers did a beautiful job this is one of the shots in the film we have a scene where our our polar bear glenn we've named him glenn after glenn Keane. uh we have a scene in there where he's trying to make friends with a orca and they're swimming around each other and then the orca's parents think otherwise, and so they break it all up. But this is um, one of my favorite scenes in the film. Uh, it was really fun animating it. And uh, and this is the, the two of them having fun together. Nice. Yeah, and 
It needs a nice gold plaque next to it. It needs a gold plaque next to it, yes. 170 to go. Sophie Keep made that. Yes, that's correct, Mark. Sophie did an amazing job. No, I'm uh, I'm just kind of filling out details right now, so maybe we gotta do another drawing. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely can find some good compositional things to do in here because it's a little sparse. Matter of fact, I might even do uh <clears throat> try something here. Any other projects in the work using Procreate Dreams? Not currently. Well, we have a workshop coming up in Yes. But as far as uh, animated projects, not quite. Yes. If you want to learn how to do dialogue animation in Procreate Dreams, go to creatureartteacher.com slash live. We have an online live workshop event on February 24th, and the spots are limited for that. So uh, it is an event that you have to pre-register for. If you can't watch it live, you can watch the replay as long as you pre-register, but after the event starts, there's you won't be able to get it. So if you're interested and it's a full day, Aaron's gonna teach take you through using Procreate Dreams, how to animate dialogue. We're gonna design a character. We're gonna send you the dialogue in advance so you can have it animate along with them and ask questions. And um, yeah, go to creatureartteacher.com slash live and you can learn all about it. Uh, Twitch question. Hey, Aaron. I'm, hey, how's it going? I am new here, and I found out about you on Corridor Digital. Hey, hey. that's good. That, well, that paid off, didn't it? Yeah, we were on, uh, Aaron was on, we were out there. We filmed that in November, right around Thanksgiving. And we were out in California, and uh, we shot, uh, I think there's going to be another video coming as well. And if you follow the Corridor crew on uh, YouTube, we were, Aaron was on a recent episode of their Animators React show. And having watched the uh, Corridor crew for the past couple of years now, it, it was really surreal seeing you know, on that show. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. Those guys are awesome. Have you had a chance or did you ever travel to Churchill, Manitoba to see polar bears there? No, I've never gone. It's on my bucket list. I want to go so badly. Um, we talked about trying to do it for snow bear, but it just wasn't in the cards. Where is that? It's uh, Churchill, Manitoba. It's on Hudson Bay. Canada. 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 My mom, a YouTube comment, she was a famous painter, told me 45 years ago, the secret is don't only do it, be it. And she's totally right. And that's the energy that you have as well, Aaron. Thanks for all you do. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, human cats, how was it on cinema therapy? Cinema therapy was cool too. Another channel that um, was crazy to see you on because I watched their stuff too, and uh, mine was blown. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm creating little bubbles here. I decided to recrop it, tighten it up a little bit. Bubbles? Bubbaloo. Oh my god, he says, uh, so often that you guys blew up and are nearly nearing a million. You guys deserve it. Thanks. Thank you. Well, help us spread the word so we can hit it this stream. We appreciate that. Human cat ass, are you going to add fish? Fish. Fish. There's always a bigger fish. 
Fai, fai Gian, fai, fai Gian, fai Gian. Don't know, maybe. Adding details now. Da -da -dee -dee -dee. Look at that. Done with the AI. Aaron Intelligence. <laughs> Could you add a little creature for him to be looking at? Oh. Maybe a little shrimp or something. I don't know. Like a glowing. Ooh. I don't know. Do you have any uh, new animation ideas or projects after Snowbank? Uh, yes. We've got a few things in the works. Yeah, we ha we've got a couple of things. We've also got a secret project that we just sort of agreed to the other day that we can't say anything about. So do with that what you You want. had me thinking there for a second, then I remembered. With a legend in the animation industry is all I'll say. Yeah. I can say no more. Let's see here. Let's do this. What if we... Any advice or wisdom... For, no. For older people who are working towards becoming an animator, would it be harder than it would be for a younger person? I don't think so. I think it's 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 hard either way. It's it's actually. I, mean, I think it, I, I would argue it might even be a little easier if you. I think when you're older, you you hopefully have beaten the uh, you've gotten the procrastination bug out of you, and you figured out how to just hunker down and and do the work. Um, so hopefully. Yeah, I, I, I think it's great, actually. Uh, we're early at 8.50. 150 to go. Almost there. Aaron Cassidy says, you're amazingly talented. My husband recommended your channel and loved watching. He's an annual subscriber. I think he was number 999,834 today. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Thank you. A huge thank you. And Eli for real says, I just subscribed to my parents. <laughs> Terrific. It's working. Robert says, what a cool experience to see this live. I'm glad I'm off today. I wish I was off today. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, you're always off. Yeah. Off just a little me. bit off.
What about something like that? Oh, that's cool. That looks like a jellyfish. Yeah. Let's see here. Let's let's try something here. I'm going to try drawing it with light colors. Did you use any reference for that jellyfish or did you just No, I just I've I've seen so many thousands of jellyfish in my life and been stung by just as many. I swear I think I've been stung by I think I've been stung a thousand times by jellyfish. Really? That many? Yes. I feel like you might be exaggerating. Trust me. I would be I I remember getting stung at least a hundred times in one day. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I would never exaggerate in a million years. Yeah. Now, I'm not I'm not saying like debilitating stings, but enough stings that you knew you were getting stung by jellyfish, that's for sure. And I they would always bloom uh, around August in in Naples growing up. And uh we were always at the beach and we were always all my friends we were always swimming into them getting stung. We'd scoop them up off the beach so that we wouldn't get stung. And we'd put our surfboard back under our arm where we scooped them up and then get stung. Is peeing on a jellyfish thing true? It is. Same with pe putting meat tenderizer on it because it's an enzyme that cuts, cuts down. The stinging cells are enzymes. So the meat tenderizer breaks those down and it stops the sting. Yeah, for people who are just joining us, if you're not familiar with Aaron's channel, <clears throat> after this stream, check it out. We've got over 700 videos there. Aaron teaches animation. He teaches drawing. He teaches uh animal painting uh traditional media digital art we do live animation streams we do character and character design all kinds of stuff covering all sorts of art related topics aaron was with disney for 21 years he worked on aladdin beauty and the beast lion king pocahontas mulan and he directed brother bear brother bear What do you think it's more like to get the Oscar in animation this year? Uh, Boy in the Heron. Misaki. Has he won before? Yep, Spirited Away won. Who did the promotional poster and cover art for the Brother Bear film? That was the marketing department. I don't know the specific person. What was it like to design Nala? She's such a simple and yet elegant character. How did you make her original? Um, lots of study. I sat down and studied a lot of... Uh, lion cubs and i um i did thousands of drawings and you just keep drawing until you start hitting on something that feels original and uh, and you just keep go keep going at it you know and and uh, eventually you hit something and you know we would we would meet every week all the animators that were designing characters and we'd give feedback on our on our designs. So I'd take that feedback and go back to my desk and utilize it and do it again.
So if you're just tuning in, people, we are marching towards 1 million subscribers. That counter in the upper left corner is live. Actually, I was going to say I thought I was covering the face, but you're not drawing in that area right now. So anyway, uh, if you haven't subscribed already, consider hitting that subscribe button and ringing the bell and all that stuff if you're on YouTube. If you're watching us on another platform, jump on over to YouTube.com slash Aaron Blaze Art. And give us a subscribe there. See if we can push it over a million while you're watching. It'll be fun to watch those numbers roll on over. We're 140 away. You can ring my bell. Ring my bell. He's here. Manny. Manny. Hello there, Aaron Blaze. Hello, Manny. Have you made it to Bulls Montana yet? Bulls in Montana. More importantly, Manny, have you subscribed to our channel? <laughs> have you said your brother or your sister? For those of you out there that don't know Manny Carrasco, check him out. Post a link to his Instagram. Yes. He post oh, my really God. You've never seen a animal artist like him. I miss Manny. I haven't seen you, Manny, in a long, long while. It's been a minute, as they say. As the kids say nowadays. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. It's been been a little while. Yeah. It's been a while. Been a while. Zoungi says, the suspense is killing me. I think I need to unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> is there a time limit on the stream? Do you know when it's ending? Literally the second we hit a million. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I keep I keep being afraid it's gonna fail out like right as the number rolls. No. Yeah. Hundred and thirty. We're in the home stretch, people. We started with five hundred to go. Actually, I think it was closer to six hundred. Maybe Carrillo said it's uh Looks like Gary from SpongeBob merged with Jar Jar Binks. Someone else said that, yeah. Well, it's kind of like how you, if you draw a crab, it's Mr. Crab. If you draw exactly, you know, yeah. If you, you draw a tiger, it's Shere Khan. It's Shere Khan, yeah. Everybody, everybody has. So what I've done is I've locked this layer, the drawing layer, so I'm going in with darker colors, keeping some of the lighter colors. Wow. 
Why is your guest not talking? Because we they're paid to be seen and not heard. <laughs> Actually, they're working. We could have had them talk more, but they're just so studious that they came in and went right to work. <laughs> That's all I heard. That's pretty much all she said. <laughs> Uh, someone's asking what the size of your canvas is. It's 18 by 24. He works at 300 DPI, but more importantly, they want to know, did you save? Oh no, I haven't saved yet. You kidding me? Why would I do that? Do you have a favorite SpongeBob character, Aaron? No, I'm 55 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Any thoughts on Mark Hen retiring? Good for him. He deserves it. <laughs> How long was he there? 43 years. I think we'll see more of him. I think if, uh, if they decide to do anything in 2D, which remains to be seen, but if they were to decide to do something in 2D, I think he'd, you might see him come out of retirement. Mark's got a lot of animation left in him. Got another puppy. Hey, puppy. Lilu. Lilu. Anybody has seen the fifth element? That's what she's named after. Aziz Light. Oh, I like the color on that, Aaron. Thanks. Twenty-seven more subscribers, and we'll show something fun. We'll show some more original animation art. How about? The, oh, wait, we were going to show Snow Bear. I keep forgetting. That. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm just letting you talk. My brain is turning to mush. <laughs> what brain? Exactly. Oh my God! He says multipass. Exactly. Multipass. I remember sitting on the bottom. I had a little diving bell. That I, I had this uh, air compressor diving unit that when I lived in the, down in South Florida, I'd take it out and you crank it up and it pumps air and it's got two regulators, uh, two hoses that would, so two people could dive. You, and you, you don't dive with tanks. You basically just put the hose in your mouth and you go down to the bottom. And we'd, we'd weight ourselves down with about 30 pounds of lead weights. And we'd, and then the, uh, in August, when there'd be lots of jellyfish, we'd go down there and we'd play volleyball with the jellyfish. Just bop jellyfish back and forth. When do you think the Spa Studios film Ember will be released? I know they're looking for funding for it. Um, I don't know. You saw, uh, when you were at CTN, you watched a presentation on it, right? It's, yeah, it's, it is so good. Well, I'm a huge... Uh, Sergio. Sergio Pablos fan, so... Um, a little bit biased but he, uh, yeah it's it's so good yeah we had a real nice time with him at ctm this year yeah we did it was cool in fact if if the schedules line up 
there's a possibility you might do a little animation on that when, yeah. the, time, when the time comes around. People who don't know what we're talking about, Sergio Pablos is the creator of the Despicable Me universe, but he also did Klaus for Netflix. And yeah. he was a and he's an amazing animator with Disney for many years. Worked on Hunchback, worked on all kinds of films. An all around nice guy. Yep. How good do you have to be at drawing to learn to animate? Well, I mean, it depends on the kind of animation you want to do. If you want to do 3D animation, you don't have to draw at all. Uh, there's a lot of animators that do not draw, that do 3D animation. If you want to be a 2D hand-drawn animator, then the better you can draw, the better you can animate. So, and it's everything in between. Um, I would say that even being a 3D animator or stop motion animator, having drawing skills. It definitely helps, def I think. Definitely helps because it's a it's a visual medium. So being able to jot down ideas and express yeah. them clearly, even if it's not. But that, yeah, but that being said, I've seen, I've met, and it, and it goes against everything that I thought I believed or thought I knew. I've met so many animators that don't draw. And I was like, what? I couldn't get my, I couldn't wrap my head around it. We're getting close to that magic number, people. Help us spread the word. Here we are. What were your thoughts on a Goofy movie? Loved it. Dustin really loved it. <laughs> Uh, Joey Mildenberger, who is doing our 2D effects course, did some work on that movie. He certainly did. Do you have any new favorite animated shows? Uh, you were watching Blue-Eyed Samurai. Did you ever finish that? Yeah, I didn't finish it. Um, it got a little over the top for me. Um, no, not really. I don't have any animated show. And I've and I got to admit, I tried to watch some of the new... Uh, animated features from this year, and I had a hard time getting through them. I liked Elemental. Yeah, I did too. I'm glad it started to find an audience because it. Yeah. It was kind of an interesting thing. It came out and didn't do well, and then it started. It kind of had legs. I've bought a few of your drawing courses and I found they've really helped me. Thanks for the tutorials and I hope you reach a million subscribers. <laughs> Thank you. Did you see the boy in the heron yet? Yes. I saw it in Japanese. That was an interesting experience. Yeah. Oh, so it was subtitled when you saw it? Yeah, uh, yeah subtitled. Yeah. In fact, I think that was, I'm pretty sure that was the very first time I've ever, ever seen a uh, a sub film uh in the theater oh yeah yeah i guess you're right for you uh, that would be the case Lori ann says congrats on almost a million i remember the early days i think i joined at around two hundred and fifty thousand. <laughs> thank you very much had a lot of new subscribers YouTube comment. I'm holding back my subscri subscription for the two million mark. <laughs> well, that's all in one layer, isn't it? Did you see the Japanese production bell? Uh, it's kind of their take on Beauty and the Beast. So it's, it's an anime. I think it's just called Bell. Uh, I know I haven't. 
Vivi says, I watched it dubbed and it was very nice. Robert Pattinson's voice acting skills were amazing. I didn't know he was a voice actor. Oh, interesting. Yeah, he's gotten really good reviews for it. They give this just a little extra room. Lori also says, I love your courses, by the way. Well, thank you. Speaking of courses, we've got a sale going on over at CreatureArtTeacher.com. If you use promo code ARTLOVE, that's all one word, ARTLOVE, A-R-T-L-O-V-E, you can get 35% off any order of $5 or more. So that's good for courses, brush packs, uh, photo, sets, photo reference sets, as well as our membership plans. So go to CreatureArtTeacher.com and use promo code ARTLOVE. Nice. Nice. Mm. How much stress do people remember how many uh, other subscribers there were when they subscribed? <laughs> Who knows? This is a weird illustration. If you're just tuning in, be sure to hit that like button and that share button. <laughs> if we can get the viewer count up, we can get the subscriber count up. Oh. Who are Joe Ramped and Joe Grant? Joe Ramped and Joe Grant uh, were story guys. Joe Grant was there. Joe Grant's first picture was Snow White. He passed away when he was 92. And uh, he was still coming into the studio when he passed away. Pretty amazing. And Joe Ramped was an, another story guy, made his way up to Pixar. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away uh, in a car accident about, oh shit, about maybe, shoot, about 20 years ago, 15 years ago. And uh, he was awesome. Super, super giving, uh, ex extremely talented, uh, just an amazing story artist and uh, all around nice guy. And so was Joe, Joe Grant. Joe Grant... Um, when we were working on uh, King of the Elves, he would come in and work with us. Uh, one of Joe Grant's big contributions um, was uh, he on uh, on Mulan. He's the one that came up with the cricket character. Oh, really? Yep. That's cool. Yeah, at ninety some odd years old. Five more subscribers and we'll show some snow bear and then we'll be a hundred away. Yeah. I'm starting to feel a little bit like I'm on a telethon. <laughs> For a $5 donation, you can get a tote bag with Aaron's face <laughs> on it. Call him that. So what I've done is I've darkened the bottom. Maybe we can show them a little bit of the shot you're working on the. I think that's okay. The walruses. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you say not the other stuff. Yeah, no, no. Oh, we just hit nine thousand nine hundred and nine hundred. Nine thousand nine hundred and nine hundred. That's a that's a crazy number. So we're gonna show some animation as soon as Aaron's ready. <laughs> All right, 9,900 and 900. That's my model number. <laughs> I'm right. a robot. All I'm right. For when, it, when it becomes the, uh, the one last number will be 999,999. 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9
I gotta turn the music off though, don't I? Yeah, you have to mute the track so we don't get dinged. Bummer. And just don't let it play, obviously, beyond the. Got some sound effects in there. <laughs> Maybe turn it down too, because it's gonna. We can get this stream up to 88 miles per hour. Right. It'll time travel. So once again, if you guys uh, join up on the website at CreatureArtTeacher.com, become a member, you can join me every Tuesday and Thursday as I make this animated short. And you can learn how to make your own. You can take me off the image, Dustin. So music, there's music in here at this point, but uh, it's all, uh, it's temporary music that exists on the internet. And so we can't, it will get flagged for it. Uh, we have original music that's being written right now. Um, and that really carries the spirit and the emotion of what's going on in the imagery. Uh, I don't really have any sound effects to, per se. There's, you'll might hear a few footfalls here and there. You'll hear water splash here and there. And this is all hand drawn in TV paint. Yeah, so I've uh, I've spent the last year and a half animating um, everything that you see. So I've been doing this in TV paint animation uh, software. It's all hand drawn. It's just paperless, so I'm drawing on my Cintiq rather than drawing on paper. But there is no computer animation per se. It's all it's all hand drawn, but drawn with TV paint animation software. Poor guy, he can't get to break. He's trying to make friends. Do you want to say who the composer is? We haven't said him this Friday. I guess we can. Yeah, he said. We yeah, can. so um, we uh, we were able to get a deal going with Mark Mancina. Mark Mancina scored Brother Bear. He scored Tarzan. He scored Moana. He scored Bad Boys. Uh, Training, Training Day. Day. August Rush. Twister. Uh, El Camino. A, a, a couple of really, I mean, uh, um, big uh, live action films. But uh, anyway, he's a great composer. We've got a great relationship with him. And I'm very excited for he and his assistant, uh, Marlon uh, uh, Empino, to, uh, to score this. So he's kind of given up on, he realizes... Uh, He's, uh, he's given up on trying to make friends, but then he thinks, wait a minute. So, you know, I'm doing, one of the things that's just taking so long is I'm, I'm doing everything you see. So I'm doing all the backgrounds and the effects animation and the character animation. And so it just takes time. Uh, but we're making some good headway. I'm getting a good uh, pace going now. So here he's finally made his snow bear. He's finally made a friend. So he's very happy. I was looking at my dog when my dog gets excited like this. So I was thinking about when I animated that. Great job on the snow texture, says Jamie. Oh, thank you. And so now, now that he's made his friend, they can have some fun together. And so this is our next section of the, of the short, our little montage of them having fun. There's going to be some animation there on the lower right. But um, I think I'm going to go ahead and stop it at this point. We're not going to show the walruses? 
Uh, I'm going to, if they want to, I think, I think this is a good chunk. There's some other parts that I just want to save. Gotcha. Okay. And uh, if you want to, uh, if you want to become a member, come and see the walrus section that we're animating. Yeah, absolutely. But um, I want to, uh, I want to keep a little bit secret, but I, you guys just watched like the first four minutes. So that's pretty cool uh, out of the 10 minute uh, short. And um, oh, a matter of fact, I can show you that's the. There's the whole timeline right there. That's the entire short. So you just saw almost half of it. <laughs> and uh, so come and join us. We have 90 to go, people. Nine zero. 90? All right. So there we are. There's our jellyfish. I'm going to add a little bit of color on that jellyfish. Lots of people saying that's amazing. Can't wait to see the whole thing. Can't wait. Thank you for the preview. Absolutely stunning. You are welcome. What can we say? You're welcome. We're hoping it gives a uh, hand drawn a little boost. A little shot in the arm. Any plans for a background course? Yes, actually, yes. Uh, Armand Serrano recently recorded some videos for us on background uh, illustration and painting, and we're going to be editing that very soon. So, Do you have a course that might help me if I'm completely new to animation? I want to get into animation, but I'm a bit overwhelmed by it all. This is from Dylan. Say it one more time. Sorry, I was I was trying to get my head wrapped around a brush. Nope, that's fine. Do you have a course that might help me if I'm completely new to animation? I want to get it, get into it, but I'm a bit overwhelmed by it all. Yes, my introduction to animation will help you with all of that. It's called Fundamentals of Animation. Yeah. I'd also recommend it. it's available as a bundle if you get our complete animation course. And again, if you use that promo code ARTLOVE, you can get that for 35% off. And that's probably our most popular course on the website. There we go. All right, how we doing? We got 85 to go. Oh my gosh, come on people. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, never mind. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you guys for all the support. This is gonna be like the end of Avengers. We're just gonna be sitting around eating the, like not able to talk. Like. <laughs> What is it, soap bar that they're eating? I can't remember what it is. They go to the... What is it? At the end of the Avengers in the post credit scene when they're just sitting in the restaurant, is it, is it soap bar? What is it that they're eating? It's... um. Oh. I can't remember the name of it, but it's... Anyway. Soba? Soba. Maybe yeah. That's what it is. Everybody loves the soba. Oh, shawarma. That's what it is. Shawarma party? Is that what it is? Yeah. What are you going to name this creature? Steve. Steve. Yep, Steve. Well, After Steve. our Steve. Twins. <laughs> I don't know. What should we name him? Help Some... us spread the word. People were getting so close. Share the stream. Share the stream. Share it. Oh, Mall Slayer. But don't cross the streams as they taught us in Ghostbusters. <laughs> I 
This looks like a relative of Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> it's the eye stocks. Yep. Farm Jar Jar Binks was no more. Jar Jar Binks was designed by Terrell Whitlatch. She also did Sebulba and Watto and all those Phantom Menace characters. Open your mind. As well as many of the creatures in Avatar. 75 to go. Ain't nothing gonna break my stride. Ain't nothing gonna slow me down. Matthew Wilder. Oh no. Who also did the music for Mulan. So close. Almost there. Almost there. Almost there. We are three hours and 11 minutes in. Yep. This feels like a bit, Martin says, this feels a bit like a New Year's countdown, except we started at three hours and 11 minutes to go. <laughs> three hours, 11.59. Three hours, 11.58. Are we still averaging about four a minute? It's going faster now. Any thoughts on the Steamboat Willie copyright ending? I don't uh, we've talked thoughts? About. Um, I think it's interesting. Um, yeah, I just, yeah, I, not really. Other than, I mean, it's not something we've talked about maybe doing something with the character, but. It's not something I'm going to really pursue a lot of. Yeah. Maybe we'll draw them on a live stream or something. Yeah. I mean, it's just the, the nature of life. Time marches on. Yeah. It's the final countdown. Doo -doo -doo -doo. That was fun. All right. So now, uh, Sinai... Tim says, I'm going to sleep. It's midnight here. We're only 44 away, Tim. Don't bail on us now. Uh -huh. 64 away, I mean. Sorry. Ba -da -ba -ba. Now you got that in my head. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Ba -da -ba -ba. It's the final countdown. <laughs> Oh, look at that. Yes. Body is like, I need to get home. Please subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> we need to order some food. That's what we need to do. Julie says, it's 11.15 here in Greece. Linda says, I'm drawing from your clear expressions course, but it's a little harder on paper. I notice Aaron uses copy and paste a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Do I now? Well, probably when you're pasting a new layer or something. Yeah. Maybe you should order some crab cakes for dinner. Yes. I <laughs> did. I'm pushing the uh, pushing the hands a little out of focus. Push them back a little ways. Sky Dreams Anime says I'm enjoying this live. Well, thank you. How many layers do you have, Aaron? All of them. <laughs> I've got a lot. I kind of went nuts with my layers. Uh, what are your thoughts on listening to music while working or drawing? Can all the time. Or does it help? It helps. I do it all the time. 
I just don't, I don't listen to music if I'm animating dialogue, because that's distracting. But otherwise, I listen to music all the time. And I believe this is a question, yeah, this is a question regarding Snow Bear. Um, is it going to have voices, or is it going to be just music in the... In just the music and sound effects, no dialogue. There will be bear sounds, but not talking. <coughs> excuse me. You're excused? Uh, excused? Favorite movie song? I think I'm okay. Did you bring one anyway? Okay, I'll drink it. <laughs> I'm just trying Dylan to... says come on people nearly 1 million get your mother to subscribe if they if you <laughs> have to he'll love Aaron anyway <laughs> Make sure you grab a... oh, I tried to listen to audiobooks a few times while working <clears throat> and wow does my ADHD go to war see that Audiobooks are different because you have to pay attention to those. Yeah, I have a hard time working and listening to audiobooks. Yeah, music is completely different. You can just have it and it's like background music, right? Yeah. But yeah. like I would listen to audiobooks and try to do work. And then all of a sudden I'd be like, wait, I haven't been listening to this book for 20 minutes. I have no idea what happened or exactly. vice versa. I'd lose track of what I was doing. The last audiobook I tried to listen to was The Life of Pi. I realized I, I, yeah, it's like you said, I'd go 20 minutes and didn't hear what was going on in the book. We're digging deep on the questions. Aaron, what's your favorite song from Greece? <laughs> uh, that's a tough one because I don't have a lot of favorite songs in Greece. Greece is the word? Yeah, probably that song. Any of the songs Frankie Valley sang, which is probably that's the only one, wasn't it? Don G says, Life of Pi. It turns out he was listening to a cookbook. Yes. He sings that too, right? Oh, that's right. He did. Aaron, have you seen Wolf Walkers on Apple TV? I watched it with my kids today. I love the beautiful animation. They left some of the pencil sketch marks. We watched it in one sitting. Well, yeah. Funny you say that because I actually worked on wolf walkers for a very short period of time and they were nice enough to give me a credit in the film yeah right at the end you'll see character design by aaron blaze so yes i've seen it pretty stinking sweet there bud <laughs> it's a great movie i think mm -hmm. it should have won the oscar yeah it should have they were robbed and klaus should have won yep Yeah, I really want to watch. Um, uh, what's the name of that show? That's I can't remember if it's already out or if it's about to come out, but it's the uh, World War II uh, fighter and bomber pilot. Night Flyers. It's not night. Yeah, it's yeah, it's out. It's like Warriors of the Skies or something like that. Yeah, it's Night Flyers. I think it's called or it's got something Flyers. What? It's out. But it's got that dude that played Elvis, and I can't, I can't, I just can't watch him. I don't know why. He bugs me. <laughs> it's that smug look. Like he's always, he's always on show. Are you more excited for Masters of the Air, Dustin, or Halo Season 2? Masters of the Air, that's what it was. 
<laughs> Masters of the Air. <laughs> What, what was the question again? I said, are you more excited for Masters of the Air or Halo Season 2? Yeah, Masters of the Air. <laughs> it was a trick question. I know. Yeah. yeah, when I saw the preview for Masters of the Air, I was like, somebody went into Dustin's brain and created a show. <laughs> <laughs> it, looks real, it does look great, though. Yeah. Except I can't, I was just saying, I can't watch... That guy that played Elvis. Oh, really? Yeah. Austin Butler. Austin Butler. That's his I name. I like him. Uh, he's always kind of, he's trying to mug it for the camera too much. Yeah. Well, I mean, are you saying that just because he played Elvis where his whole job was to mug it for the camera? No, he continues to do that. Have you seen him with interviews? Yeah. Oh. Uh, that's just me being a grouchy old man. 45 to go. Come on, people. Everyone's going to keep drawing bubbles until... Yeah, I'm just sitting here. I am so noodling this thing. <laughs> All I'm doing is noodling it. What do you mean by noodling? Exactly what I'm doing. What do you think is one of the most underrated Disney films? For me, I think Treasure Planet is one of them. I cannot mm. even find merchandise for that film. That was a Facebook question. Uh, underrated. Mm, I don't know. I think they all are pretty rated where they, I don't know. Uh, yeah. I mean, Treasure Planet was awesome, but was it as good as some of the others? I don't think so. You know, a lot of people say Brother Bear is over underrated. I don't know if it was underrated. There's so much I would do differently on Brother Bear. Have you ever seen the movie Wish? No, I no. I tried to watch it the other night and it, I didn't get through it. Mm. Any thoughts on Black Cauldron? Yeah, I hate Black Cauldron, and I and I shouldn't say that because I usually try to be pretty positive about everything, but I can't get Black Paul Cauldron. is just a dark period of Disney animation. <laughs> Oh, and there go the unsubscribes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. If we get back up to 900, we'll see. <clears throat> How many that, followers do we have now? That's yeah. coming from a Disney animator. <laughs> the Art of Aaron Blaze unsubscribed to the Art of Aaron Blaze. That's weird. <laughs> Fun film animation says, uh, yes, Nick, yes, Treasure Plane is so underrated, but it's one of my favorite movies. Yeah, I I love, love that movie. And and uh John Silver's uh little pet speeches all always uh gets you to tear up. Gets me to tear up. Like whenever I need need some motiv motivation, I, whenever I need a good pick me up, I always watch watch that movie. Have you ever used Moho or Toon Boom? I've had Moho pork. Yeah, delicious. Uh, no, I don't use Toon Boom or Moho. TV paint. How is this so realistic? Uh, I don't know. Well, think about the lighting. I think about lighting. I think about form. Uh, all those different, all that stuff. We have a full course on how to paint light. And really, light and shadow are what makes something appear realistic or not. It really is pushing the, the values that way. And you can get that course for 35% off with yeah. the code art love. Leandro Rubble says, I'm, th I'm thinking about unsubscribing and resubscribing five minutes later just to mess with you. No, <laughs> please don't. Do it. I dare you. No, no, <laughs> Dustin, quiet. 
<laughs> also, we lose 30 in an instant. All right, let's see here. I put a link to the how to paint light course for people who might be interested. Jim one of my favorite the, courses okay. that we have on the site. Oh yeah? And not just because I'm in it. <laughs> uh, Jim Wool says, uh, I am debating whether or not I should do animation at college or illustration. Any advice? Uh, it depends on what you, what you enjoy more. Um, you know, they're two completely different things and, uh, <clears throat> I personally, I, you know, I went to college for illustration and then I became an animator later on. And I personally enjoy animation more, um, but that's a personal thing. Uh, I, it, you got to follow your heart. So I don't, I don't have much more advice other than that. <laughs> that's an interesting question subscriber i think this is towards you about me if you could turn dustin into an animal what would it be <laughs> that is a good one <laughs> if you could turn me into an animal what, what would Sasquatch. you watch yeah <laughs> be realistic here I take it you don't subscribe to the cryptozoology theory. Eh. <laughs> Frank says, I just got my dog to subscribe. <laughs> well, now you're thinking frank thank you silverdale fit silverdale's a beaver how about dustin could be a kuwaka the funny creature kuwaka. the funny smiley one yeah oh. go kuwaka kicking <laughs> yeah that's a that is a good one from western <laughs> australia go kuwaka waka a few years ago when they had those uh wildfires we did a live stream to raise money for the, the some of the animal organizations there yeah. and uh aaron drew a bunch of animals from australia and he did some fun quokka drawings they were really cool they were fun youtube drama asked what is your favorite type of lighting to paint uh rim lighting So the other one that you do a lot is the uh, is the angled angled lighting shadow. Yeah, the sh the shadow. The cast shadow. <laughs> yes. Have you saved your file yet? I have not. Probably should. Yeah, I would say at this point. Fun film animation asks Aaron, uh, Aaron, Dustin, and Nick, if you each had one million dollars, what would be the first thing you would do with the money? Who says I don't? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. <laughs> one million dollars. I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'd probably I'd, I'd, I'd fund a movie. Yeah, I was just going to say, probably work on animation. Put it right into. I would build my dream pe my dream desktop. For a million dollars? That better be an amazing. Like, <laughs> I was going to say, I what? was like, what? If you ask what was the first thing I would do with the million dollars? Oh, not, not with things, the entirety of the money. Not the entirety. Fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. Because I, I know it's going gonna, it's gonna to be like chump change in comparison to what to the whole million dollar thing, but like Aaron's cast shadows are Bob Ross's trees. Yeah. 
happy little shadow. You know what? As we get close to the million here, Aaron, maybe we you go into the live stream folder. We can show some of the past images we've done over the. That's a good idea. Uh, Jolene asks, if you say you Jolene, work, you Jolene, work, you work together with other animators at Disney, for instance, what does that look like? What, who does what? And is it hard for you to transfer artwork to somebody else? No, it depends on you, you, whoever's back then animators were cast on characters like an actor is a live actor is cast to a role so rather than doing multiple characters we all did this you know we were cast to a character that we would animate so if you had two characters in a shot two animators would do that shot and so you would start with whoever the dominant character is in the shot that's who would get the shot first and then you know the the other animators would follow follow up um is that the whole question? Or am I, am yeah. I missing? Yeah. It's just more how do you do it? Yeah. yeah. How did that work? <clears throat> 23 to go, Aaron. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the spam callers are calling now, too. Here we are. Here's our big creature in the sky. Thank you for watching, everybody. I'm yes. Thank time. you very much for watching. A hit. And sticking with us this whole time. We know some of you have been on the entire <laughs> three and a half hours. Yeah. We've had longer streams, but this is this is up there. This is right, right up there. How do they overlay paper images onto the background in paper animation? Say that again. How, how do, do they, they get? How do they overlay paper, the drawings onto the backgrounds in paper animation? Well, they're, the the animation's done on paper, but then it's scanned. Or back in the day, it was xeroxed onto a cell, or inked onto a cell, and that cell is clear, and so you can see through it. And so you have a drawing on a clear cell and that sits on the background and then, or if it's scanned, it's laid over the background and that's how you get your animation over a background. If that makes sense. The stream is nowhere near as long as the birds of prey course. <laughs> that is true. Very true. How are you celebrating reaching a million? Well, we're celebrating it by doing this stream. We actually weren't going to stream today. So we're going to, our celebration is being here with you. And then drinking heavily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe they want you to do a dance. A million. <laughs> Give us a dance. <laughs> after you, Steve, after you. <laughs> Is there any character you really wished you had been cast on while you were working at Disney? Maruhute. I really wanted to work on Maruhute. Maruhute! Would you say a grizzly bear or a hippo is more dangerous? A hippo. I would say a hippo. Alex just joined us and said, I was sent here by my dad. He said, you're one of his favorite artists. I just subscribed. Ah, thank you, dad. And thank you, Alex. 
Did, did, did you? Julio says, thank you, everyone contributing on and off screen for the stream. We're all here. Ten to go. Ten. Ten. Nine. Come on, people. Get us there. Just gonna just gonna start counting it down like, like <laughs> New Year. Yeah, yeah, I'm a little <laughs> Have you ever read hey. the call, have you ever read the Call of the Wild? I've read Call of the Wild about three times. And I I do a character design uh course and I talk about Buck in my character design course, who is the star character in Call of the Wild. Jack London was one of my favorite writers. Very much moves. Starts frantically pressing the almost there button. Almost there. Almost there. One more thing. One more thing. <laughs> I am so noodling Seven. this thing right now. We can show other stuff. Actually, we're at, we're at six now. Six. Six. Six left. Five. We've been working at this for 10 years. Jolene, five, Jolene just more to a, go. a donation and Four. said, I'm a bear character jumping up and down saying you're number one fan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We got four more followers to go. Back to five. Everyone's going nuts right now. <laughs> four, back to four. The suspense is killing you guys. Imagine what it's doing to us. <laughs> Ten years. We're getting three. there. Oh, we're at three now? We're, we're at three. three. Come on. Come on. <laughs> One. One. <laughs> triple nine, comes. triple nine. Here it comes. Yay, we passed <laughs> over. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We did it. <laughs> One million. Look at that. One million four five six. Yeah. Oh, now it's cr now it's cranking. Those are all the people waiting for it to to be the million. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I think, I think it, it is. is. I think it is. Yeah. Thank you. Wow, it really is. Wow. It's flying uh, now. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Oh, Thank that's you, funny. everybody. Thank you so much. Insanity. That's awesome. So they're waiting to be the million. Mm -hmm. I hope there's a million people waiting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's it up to now? We I mean, we just blew past it. We just added twenty six over. Oh, that's funny. Okay, now if everybody gets one friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, you guys. It's been a great ten years. You know, starting this out ten years ago, I wasn't sure if it was going to work. Actually, I take that back. I was going to make it work one way or the other. But uh, and then Nick and I got together and and uh, and it's just really been a great 10 years. And having Steve come on board and Claudia, Dustin. Yeah, let's have everybody, everybody say hi. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, go full screen. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Happy one million. Woohoo!
All right. Holy cannoli. Anybody hungry? Mariana says, <laughs> Thank, let me say that your streams are what got me through stressful mornings back in college. Thank you. Oh, that's awesome. So well, thank you. So many people are saying congratulations. Well deserved. Cheers to you all. Trophies. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Two million next week. Yes. Yep. <laughs> that's it. We need a group photo on the social sites. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. Actually, we should do that. We should do that right after this. I am freezing, by the way. Yeah, I've had this thing cranking the whole time. <laughs> we got a little, uh, Aaron got a new air conditioner in the office, and it's uh, it works. Yeah, it, it works really well. <laughs> should have brought a parka. Yeah, my legs are freezing. Well, let's, but... do a, let's do a pan and scan and um, yeah, show the artwork to everybody and... We'll remind them of the sales and all that stuff. Sign all right. So here we are. We started out as this uh, little scribble. And now we've got a, I don't know what it is, but it's a crab creature. <laughs> he looks delicious. <laughs> and you can see I keep a lot of the rough drawing in there. That's all still in there. I don't sweat it too much. And you could take this even further if you wanted to photo bash you know, photographic textures and and that sort of thing. And like sometimes you know, I like to create depth by blurring, uh, create a depth of field by blurring certain areas out. It's all about texture, light, and shadow. <laughs> Studio Doug says, my, my wife would be allergic to that dude. <laughs> Me too, actually. I have a shellfish allergy. Yeah, there you go. But it's my favorite food. I refuse to give in. <laughs> you know, the way that mouth is on uh, that character kind of reminds me from uh, Lord of the Rings, uh, Return of the King. Oh, yeah. There's the uh, there's a particular um, like villainous character that comes out of the gates. Oh, yeah. At the end, he has this like, big, creepy smile. Did you say creepy? Creepy. You said creepy. Creepy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's hit it. Thank you, everybody. We'll what sales do we have going on? We've got a big sale going on over at CreatureArtTeacher.com. If you, everything is on sale, but if you use promo code ARTLOVE, that's all one word, you can get an additional 35% off any order of over $5 or more. Also, if you have Procreate Dreams or are interested in Procreate Dreams, we've got a $1 Procreate Dreams course where Aaron takes you through his approach on how to use it. Also, we have a Procreate Dreams workshop coming up next month. If you go to creatureartteacher.com slash live, you can sign up for that. And um, spots are limited, though. So that's a live all-day workshop. As long as you pre-register, you can watch it after the fact or you can tune in live. But you can't sign up after the event. And then finally, don't forget our $1 character design course. That's still going for a limited time, go to creatureartteacher.com slash learn. That is a 16-hour uh, course. Includes over 20 videos. Creatureartteacher.com slash learn. Thank, Thank you, you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. That was a great day. Awesome. Go put some beauty back in the world. Right That's here. right. Cowboy see. Bebop. And uh, for those of you that are subscribers, we will see you back here again on Tuesday. Actually, we'll see everybody. If you're not a subscriber, we'll be back yeah. next Friday. Actually, we will be back Friday. It's the first Friday of the month. Yeah. First Friday. In February. So spread the word. Tell your friends. See ya. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>